What's uh, Bet Lynch about? Bet? Oh, it's a bit early for Bet yet, love. Ah, she's not one of uh, life's early risers, you know, and I'll bet. Well, could you tell her I'd like a word with her, please? Well, um... Yeah, well, is it something that can't wait, love? You see, if she goes to bed late, she often doesn't get up till after ten. And she was late last night, as it mm. happens. Yeah, I bet she was. I mean, I'll give her a knock if it's something urgent. No, no, it's too late. I'll uh, catch up with her during the day. Ah, well, we'll tell you what to see her, shall we? Yes, yeah, she might do that. Shall we say what about? No, don't bother. I'm sure her hide's not that thick that she doesn't know what I want her for. Do you know what all that were about? I haven't got a clue. But looking at Elsie, I think we're safer not knowing. Mm. Hey, so I'm out shopping and this couple asked me how I am. I said, all right. I said, but I've just lost my husband, which I had because he'd wandered off somewhere. <laughs> Do you know I should have a lead for him or something? <laughs> well, get on with him, then. Well, when I said I'd lost him, they thought I meant that he'd popped his clothes. <laughs> hey, can you imagine that, kid? Hey, but they were right upset. They said, what it unexpected, like? Oh, yeah, are a thing. Hey, then what happened? <laughs> oh, so then he turns up, doesn't he? Walking like a zombie, like he usually does. Carrying all this wood, he just thought. Hey, it could have been his coffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Something funny, is it? Oh, yeah. I was just telling them about our Jack rising from dead at Middle Dean's Gate. Rising from what? I was just somehow telling them. You want to get here early in the morning, then you know about it. I want to what? Say that again. Just. We're only a joke. I want to get here on time. I were only a joke. only joke. Now, let me tell you something. I was here until gone ten last night, working. And it's been the same as that every night for the past month. And do you know why? Just so I can keep this place running, that's why. So I can keep you lot in a job, that's why. So you do me a favour, you. Don't start telling me that I'm late. So we can have a job? I'll tell him what to do with his flipping job one of these days, I will. Just cos he's got hangover. Hey, he does look tired, though, doesn't he? Tired? Oh, he does, don't you think? I'm tired of counting his brass. Flaming hangover. Hey, poor little chap. I mean, it must be tiring, you know, looking after all us lot. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> hey, it must, though, be right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I've tidied round upstairs and I've done the beds. Oh, you needn't have bothered. I'd have done it later. Oh, now there's no need. I'll make us a pot of tea, shall I? Oh, I'll make it. You Why come and sit there. <laughs> well, I'd better get on then, Tracy. Oh, yeah. I have, haven't I? There's some more of this. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking about all the silly little arguments we have. Arguments? Well, not exactly arguments, but... I mean, who's going to put the kettle on? Who's turning it to Hoover? Who's going to run to the shop? I mean, well, let's face it, we're just trying to fill us time in, aren't we? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I would. Do you know, I used to have two aunties in their 80s. They lived together. And the way we carry on, I keep being reminded of them. Oh, no. Well, no, then. But, I mean, look at us as we were two or three years ago and look at us now, eh? Everybody feels like that from time to time, though, don't they? Yeah, some have more cause than others, though. I mean, do you miss having a job? A job? Yeah. Cos I do. I think I think that's part of it, anyway. Well, I've not been that long without one, though, have I? No. Do you know, I was wondering whether it might be worth having a look round, to see if there's anything going. Mm, well, why don't you, then? Well, it can't do any harm. The money would be nice. Oh, heck, I've offered you a cup of tea. I haven't even put a kettle on yet. Oh, well, I'll do it while you... Ah, uh ah. -uh. <sighs> Sorry. No more arguing. There's going to be a different setup round here starting this minute. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. This minute, your mum is dead, and you set up. Thank you, Mrs. Dilworth. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. <coughs> oh. Hey, Alan. Oh, bless you. I see Bet's in the land of the living. We might find out what else the Tony was up in arms about then. Hey, listen, don't you get involved. Them two are big enough to take care of themselves. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Reenie. Oh, love. Good morning, cigarettes. 65p worth every last p. But. Yes, love. Oh, Elsie was in earlier. She said she wanted a word with you. Elsie Tanner. Oh, I know what you mean, love. I think I can guess why as well. So where's Fred now, then? About Derby, she demanded. <laughs> What's she doing there? 
penance for losing Mrs. Walker's handbag last night. He volunteered to give up his day off so he could take Mrs. Taylor Brown home. He volunteered? I don't believe a word of it. Well, he felt he had to do something, and then, of course, Mrs. Walker decided she'd go with them and visit their journey. Well, so he's got them both on the back seat now. Yeah. Like a couple of nesting pieces, eh? Coming at each other behind your ears. And your little cup of poison, is that it, then? Yeah. Do you want one? Can you afford it? Not really, no. Then I will. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. Cheers, then. Yeah, cheers. Hey, was that you I saw over the road last night till all hours? Yeah. Ah, I saw your light on there. I'm big sick of it. Apart from moving a bit in there, I'm working all hours at God's sin. Yeah, it's easily done. Yeah, I'm using too much of this stuff to keep me going. Can you fry the might evaporate? <laughs> not anymore, I'm not. You can put another large one in there, please. No. Anyone else? Yeah, I thump, no, I've already just started this one. Oh. Just me, Nessie. Can I just check something first? What? That you've remembered me in your will? Just get the drink. Just get the drink. You know, trouble with a one-man operation like yours, I suppose, you've got nobody you can sort of uh, delegate to, you know what I mean? You're right there, I am. You see, I bet you could do with a supervisor in that sign room for a start off. What you're mean is I should promote your wife, isn't it? Huh? Oh, no, no, I mean, uh, look, that's not what well, I was Well, don't you think at. she'd be any good at the job, then? Well, um, as a matter of fact, I think she'd be very good. But, well, I mean, I'm not saying she couldn't do it, you know what I mean? Your transfusion. So, no, you're right, I do need someone. And I say this about Ivy, better the devil you know and the one you don't. Yeah, that's the way I like to look at her and all. Cheers. Yeah. Well, we just have to see how things go then, won't we? No, all I'm saying is, there's no need to encourage them to actually play the records and then hang around and talk. I'm only trying to sell records. I mean, I won't try if you don't Well, of course I want you to sell the records, but I mean, it's just right ways and wrong ways of doing everything. Well, I think you've been using the wrong way. I mean, most of those you'll only be able to sell as golden oldies you've had in that long. Yeah, I'll take this one. Which? Oh, yeah. Four pounds is that? Yeah. Please? Yeah. Thank you. Hope you like it. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Look, I know I may seem old-fashioned to you, Louise, but the danger is if you're too familiar with people, well, there's always the chance they might take advantage. Oh, has that happened a lot with you? People trying to take advantage? No. I'll tell you what, while we've now to do, I'll make us a cup of tea, shall I? Oh, well, just a bit near dinner time. Oh, Where's little Tracy? Oh, she's helping Emily to wash up. At least that's what she thinks <laughs> she's doing. No, I've uh, I've just called in to ask you if you're still on your own here, like. On my own? Yeah, I just wondered if there was a chance of a job going for me. Oh, no. I, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but we've taken on a new assistant. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Hello, love. Hello. No, I just thought it was time I got back in harness, and with this place being so close, it would have been just the tickets. Well, I'll let you know if there ever is another vacancy. <laughs> You'll have it thinking I'm after a job. <laughs> OK, I'll see you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 You see, Louise, what I was saying before, you see, I do talk to people, but, well, somehow it's not the same as you do. Yeah, I was watching. Good. And there is a difference. When they talk to me, they buy things. Hey, you know I had Elsa Tanner in here last night telling me how, um, you know, that fella. Dan Johnson? Yeah, I was out with his mates and I'm saying, oh, yes, Elsie. No, Elsie. Knowing full well that you were out with you. I bet you were great, Betty, love. I just wish I'd have been here to see you. Yeah, well, don't you think you can get away with tricks like that forevermore? I mean, folks round here, you know, they're not as dozy as you think they are. Hey, look, have you seen Sleeping Beauty over there? <laughs> hey! Wakey, wakey! Hey? Sign of old age, that is, Albert. Sleeping when people are talking to you. Oh, I am old. I didn't think you were as old as all that, though, Albert. Oh, well, I am. And now I'll finish my kip, if you don't mind. Oh, suit yourself. It's just that I was going to ask you if you wanted another drink. Like. Well, I, I can always manage another. Oh, I thought you might, somehow. Right, love, two hours of bitch, a large one or whatever yeah. Mike's having. Right. And uh, a packet of peanuts. OK. You know, I must be crazy. Right round the twist. Why? Well, here am I working myself into an early grave, or at least an early ulcer. And for what? A two-bit factory that anyone else would have walked out of years ago. Overnight. 
I mean, what makes me do it? I don't know. Well, it can't be the profit, can it? Never have a chance to spend it nowadays. I mean, why do I do it? Why does he do what? Hello, Chuck, I don't know. What would you like? Oh, uh, nothing, thanks, except for a word with this gentleman here. Me? £1.35, Gilbert. Sounds good. Yeah, that's if you don't mind talking shop and in your dinner time as well. Well, why should I mind? A Look. sleep, eat and drink shop. What was it you wanted? A job. Oh, is that all? No, I'm sorry, love. Nothing doing at the moment. But I'll tell you where you might be lucky, if you're not too fussy. No, no, anything. Weatherfield Rainwear. Do you know them? Weatherfield yeah. Rainwear? Yeah. Excuse me a minute. Well, listen, come here. I hear they're expanding, taking on extra staff. Yeah. I'll put a word in there for you, if you like. Hello, hey, girls. All right. Hello. 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 Hey, excuse me a minute, but could I just have a word with you? Um, private. Hello. Hello. Isn't he nice to you? I mean to say as your husband. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. husband, yeah. if he doesn't. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Listen, what is it? What do you want, love? Oh, nothing. It's uh, just something I thought you might want to know, that's all. Know what I mean? Oh, come on. Have you noticed he's always polite, isn't he? Oh, in company, I. You know, it must be nice. I bet we introduce your husband to people without him feeling insulted. <laughs> but he didn't mention how definite then, I mean, about me. Well, he said, um... Yeah. He said, uh, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Oh, bet. <laughs> no, he was just joking. Excuse but, me? Hey, but he definitely said he wanted a supervisor. And you mentioned me? And I mentioned you, so you've got now to worry about. Look, from the way he was acting, I'd say you've as good as got that job laid out right on a plane. <laughs> Just come in. Yeah. Oh, you mean our ex supervisor's gone to serve on a greasy jaws? <laughs> oh, she were all right, would I say? When it suited her. Well, she wants supervisor, you know. I mean, you have to be a bit laddy down that job, don't you? Do you? Yes, love. I don't want to drink, Betty. I'd just like a word with Madam there, if you don't mind. But if you don't mind. She wants a word with you, does Elsie? How does she? It's not about that fella, is it? Why not ask her? But we don't want the slanging match in here, love. About last night, I thought it might be. What game do you think you're on? Look, Elsie, I'm sorry that you had to see us like you did. Oh, you mean you'd rather I hadn't found out at all? I know how you must have felt, and like I said, I'm sorry. Is that all you've got to say? Well, there's not a lot more I can say, is there? Well, I can, and I'm warning, warning. you, lady. Don't you ever try and make a fool of me again try like that. Try and make a fool of you, Elsie. I wasn't even trying. Now, listen, you, once and for all, if ever again you put your sticky fingers on any fella that belongs to me, I'll knock that stupid peroxided head right off your silly shoulders. You know, it's funny. I don't remember him, damn, mentioning he ever had out to do with you. No, well, he wouldn't, would he? He wouldn't have chance, not with you throwing yourself at him like he was the last man alive. Did he know that you throw yourself at everything in trousers that comes through that flaming door? Funny you getting so upset, Chuck. I was under the impression he was under your roof as a lodger, bed and breakfast. Now, don't you, know. you get clever with me, madam. I thought you saw him last thing at night and first thing in the morning. Of course, I could be wrong. You could be very wrong, so watch what you're saying. There could all be right, Elsie, You can't right. even keep a fella of your own, can at you? At least I don't hold open house. Bring your lorry to Elsie Tanners. You cheap, foul mouth, flute. Yeah, I you. suppose the older you get, the more jealous you get, eh? All right, I've heard enough. Now, come on. Definitely had enough. Shouldn't you be saying that to that bag? Look at you, that's working here. For God's sake, forget about the whole damn thing. She's on home territory here. Don't forget. Well, hey, you want it, Grace? Too close. Too close. Too close. I don't know, but want it, Grace? Hey, it was better than wrestling on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> hey, it must be them lodges she's been at. She said yeah, lollies, didn't she? Yeah. Lollies. Hey, come on, we'll get sacked. Hey. What? Packet of cheese and onion crisps. He might not notice. Kind of big stuff. Oh, it's only five minutes. Hey, never mind. Come on, let's get in. Oh, hello, Mr. Mulvey. What's all this in? New system, is it, eh? Swedish or something. Start when you want and finish when you want. Oh, I'm sorry, will it, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah, only if they had a cabaret roll. Mm -hmm. Cabaret? Yeah, just after you when. You just missed it. I yeah. seem to be missing everything today, don't I? Yeah, we're back lynch now, Mr. Tanner. Well, thank you very much, Vera, but I'm not interested. Really? Really. Now, if you wouldn't mind just getting on with your work, OK? Well, I don't mind. I do. This is stuff for Aspinall's, isn't it? Yeah. You uh, saw it packed this morning, did you? Like I said. Yeah. No, what I mean is, did you... Look, come in the office a minute, will you? Hey, I bet it was Betley to recognise it, Elsa Thomas fella. Oh, all right. Well, I've been... No, what I mean is you made sure that everything on top was the good stuff, didn't you? I mean, anything a bit uh, doubtful, we wouldn't want it to be the first thing they saw, would we? Are you with me? Yes, uh, yes. 
I made sure that Doug stood front bottom. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have put it like that myself, but, uh... Well, good stuff for on top, let's put it that way. Yeah, let's. What's all this about the Rovers? Oh, better than you know, sit on her, scratching each other's eyes out nearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, don't let me keep you from your bonus, go on. There's something else, though? Oh, no. Not unless there's something else that you know that I don't. No. But I'm in the work. <laughs> Oh, they, they always let me change them if they're unsuitable. Well, what way is it not suitable? That's got nothing to do with you. I just want to change it. Well, you can't change it, Mr Tatlock, and you know very well you can't. We can't go changing books. They've been read. Well, who says I've read it? Well, you bought that one, what, about a month ago now? Well, I'm a slow reader. No, I'm sorry. You're very welcome to choose another book, but if you do, you'll have to pay for it like everybody else. Well, well I'll know next time then, won't you I? You knew this time. Oh, it... You try reading on an old age pension. Oh. Now, you see, Louise, that's a very good example of what I was saying. What? About dealing with customers. You see, it's all very well playing records and that, but sometimes you just have to show a bit of authority. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no knowing what liberties they might take. Yeah. Anyway, look, look. I'm going to leave you in charge for half an hour while I pop down to the wholesalers. You'll be all right, will you? Yeah. All right, then. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. Oh, in charge. If only me mum could see me now. Oh, she'd be wanting a free packet of fags knowing her. Afternoon, Lou. Hello. Oh, you're in charge, eh? Yeah. Manager S has just popped out. You must have passed her. Yeah, that's what I meant. You're new here, aren't you? Yeah. Enjoying it? It's all right. Ah, it's better than the door queue, isn't it? You bet. Yeah. Right, love, here we are. Sign it. What for? Oh, it's just the normal procedure, you see. I'll leave these here, then call back in a day or two and see how they're going. Only I have to get your signature. You know my boss? He thinks I'm stuffing them down great somewhere. Hey, look who it is. Hello. Come to see out where the half lives, have you? Something like that. And come to collect an order you've been doing for us while I'm at it. Hey, no wonder we didn't see you at last year meeting. I've not been with bosses now, are you? Well, would you say no if your firm wanted to give you more money for doing less work? Oh, fat Janssen here. Well, I'm Stringer, yeah? From Espen. That's right. Mike Baldwin. Yeah, I guessed who you were. Oh? I'd already had a description, you see. Oh, I see. I told you not to say all them things about Well, anyway, everything's packed and ready. All you've got to do is say the word and it's yours. Well, I shall want to have a look. Well, everything's there. I mean, two, four, six dozen of them. I mean, inside. See what I'm buying. I mean, I don't know what you've slipped in at bottom, do I? Yeah, well, time's money. I didn't think you'd want to waste either. Everything's there. I'm sure it is. Only I'd like to see for myself, if you don't mind. All right. Have it your way. Well, take your pick. Which one do you want me to open? All of them. Two pound eleven peel, please. That's it, two pound eleven. And I've got a little one in here somewhere. Let me see. Evening, Alf. Evening, Rini. Um, Hello. Have a nice day. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. so have I. Just the odd rowdy customer. But then you get drunks and riffraff in every pub, don't you? Ah, uh, here we are. I knew I had one somewhere. Thank you very much, love. Well, see you. Well. Great, isn't it, having a corner shop? Hearing everything that goes on and not understanding a word of it. Weatherfield Rainwear? Oh, is that the factory with the clock on? The one that's always... That's always the... wrong, yeah. Anyway, I went down this dinner time, had a good look round, interview with the personnel manager. Well, not exactly an oh, interview. Oh, but what did they say? They said, yes, I've got the job. Oh, that's wonderful. Start Monday. Oh, I am pleased, Deirdre, really I am. It'll get you out, meet new people. And give you Tracy to yourself eight hours a day. I know what you're thinking. Now, they asked me if I had any children. I said, don't worry. If Tracy were given the choice, I'm sure she'd rather spend the day with her Auntie Emily than with her mum. Hello, love. Hello. Evening paper, please. Ten pence, please. So. Hello. What's these, then? Them's new. Yeah. Yes, I can see they are. Hey. Go on, I think I'll have one of these as well. Just one pound and five pence, then, please. Right. There oh. we are. Hello, Mr. Tilson. Is Louise looking after you all right, then? She... Yes, she is, love. Thanks very much. Cheerio. Good. Bye. Bye. Oh, I thought I'd never get away. But it, uh, 
You've been all right, have you, on your own? No problems. I've had not to do for most of the time. Well, afternoons do tend to be a bit quiet. It's about now that they can start up. What are these? Old man left them. The man? What man? I don't know what man. He said he was leaving them, so I signed a paper and he left them. He said he'd be back in a day or two to see how they were selling. Oh, he didn't have a stink of aftershave, though. Have you seen what these are? What do you mean? Well, they're, they're pornographic. Oh, yeah. I had a look at one of them. Well, we don't sell this sort of thing in the cabin. I mean, well, we just don't. Oh, Louise, whatever were you doing letting him leave things like this? I've got the impression he always left them. Well, I can assure you he does not. And you say you signed for them as well? Yeah. Oh, dear. He said sign here, so I did. Oh, I suppose you couldn't have known. But... Well, whatever are we going to do? Make him take him back. Oh, that's easier said than done. I thought you didn't stand for any liberties. No, well, um... Look, I'll tell him if you like. Don't worry me. No, uh... No, I'd, I'd better do it. Oh, I'd better get them off the counter. Don't know what our regular customers would think. I could never look them in the face again. I've already sold two copies. Oh, you haven't. That chap who just left bought one of them. What, Mr Tilsley? Yeah. Oh, no, Louise, he couldn't have done. Well, he did. Well, he, he must have thought it was a do-it-yourself book or something, cos, well, he's very keen on that sort of thing, is Mr Tilsley. Well, I can't believe he'd want to buy one of these. Good job I looked, weren't it? Yeah. I'll find you some replacements for the ones I have to take out tomorrow, all right? I'll tell you that when I've seen them. Yeah, of course. Well, see, I'm fixed, don't you? I'm short of staff. No one I can rely on. So when I ask them to pack the stuff for you, what happens? I mean, I can't be everywhere, can I? Can't be standing over them. So they slip a few dodgy ones in at the bottom. Then they think they're doing me a favour. You'll be glad I checked them for you, then. Yeah. Join me in a drink. No, thanks. Been at Aspinall's long, have you? Long enough. Ten years. Oh, doing what? Oh, shop floor for five. Then supervisor. And since last month, they made me up. Senior inspector. How'd you like to come here and work for me? Eh? It's a bit sudden. I like the way you work. I'd rather have you on my side than the enemies. Bit the same sort of job as you're doing now. You know, uh, production control, supervising the staff, that sort of thing, you know. Watching over Ivy's gang. <laughs> Some of the time, yeah. I see. And what would be in all this for me? Quite a lot. Now, this being a smaller firm, you'll have some more say now it's being run. No? That wasn't what I meant. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a fiver a week on top of what you're getting now. Sounds worth thinking about. Right, think about it. Then come back, we'll have a talk. One thing. What? It just strikes me as a bit odd. Why don't you promote from your existing staff? Well, I was going to, till you turned up. And I mean, well, not that it worries me. But I mean, they're not going to be very pleased, are they? Ivy and them. They're not going to be very pleased when I suddenly appear waving a big stick. Well, I must admit, there's one or two of them that you get a bit of aggro from, but uh, nothing we couldn't handle between us. Louise's mags land her in hot water with Len in tomorrow's classic Coronation Street at 6.30, while in a few moments tonight there's a communication problem at St Swithin's in Doctor in Charge. <laughs> Early bird, aren't we? Well, they say early bird catches the worm, don't they? And I've got one, Jack. Is at home now, <laughs> wondering whether to go to work or not. <laughs> Bring out your jet. Wakey, wakey. Oh. It's a lovely day for the race. Oh. What race? The human race. Oh, right. It's even a nice day for you and Earl Stan. Hey, you might knock. Sorry, Mrs. O. I didn't think anything would be going on. Oh. How are the invalids this morning? Rotten. Oh, I've hardly slept a wink. I just dropped off when you come busting in. What do you want to wake us up for? Well, I had to wake you up, didn't I? It's time for your sleeping pill. You <laughs> what? Don't forget it. Look, I brought your breakfast up for you. 
Breakfast in bed. Now, how long is it, Hilda, since Stan brought your breakfast up for you? Never. That's how long it is. He's brought his own breakfast up a time or two when he's had too much ale the night before. Once, only once, and that wasn't the ale. That was a bad pie. Oh, aye. Mm. What time is it, any road? It's nearly half eight. They're all piling into Baldwin. Mm. Half eight? What do you want to wake us up for? Listen, you get woken up earlier than that in hospital, you know. I've got a routine to keep to. I've got to look after the house as well as you two. I don't know, some people are self, self, self. Oh, you should have let us sleep. Right. Fair enough. You snuggle down again. I'll take the breakfast back down. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Seeing you brought it up, we'll, uh, we'll force it down. Yeah. yeah, should think so and all. Oh. Here we are. Ah. Nice cup of tea and a chucky egg apiece and a nice bit of toast. And you can make your own soldier, Stan. Very nice, Eddie. Right. Ah. Here, Stan, let me do that. Oh, I'm as weak as a kitten. I need feeding up before I get back work. Well, I'm not starting again till I'm fit, neither. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're in trouble if I get pearly, aren't we? That bed doesn't look big enough for three of us. <laughs> <laughs> got tea bags, washing up liquid. They've even got tin pairs. Oh, well, I'm not trailing all down that way just for the sake of threat and so. Hey, up. You really? What happened? Your Jack kicked you out of bed or something? Listen, he's never kicked anybody out of bed in his life, then. He wouldn't have strength. Well, how come you're early? I set alarm clock wrong, didn't I? My happy little crew, my band of sisters. They don't miss much, though. I mean, that Vera just now, I could see her brain clicking over. Oh, yeah, what about? Well, you and me coming to work together in your car. So what? Well, they might get the wrong impression. The right impression, you mean? What they think doesn't matter to me. It matters to me, though, Mike. I mean, if they cotton on, it could undermine my authority. Listen, you get your authority from me. What they think doesn't matter are monkeys. Oh. Hey, uh, Shani pulled up to work in his car this morning, kid. Oh! Oh, the old thing. Polly Stringer? Yeah. Hey, she was out there large as life, kid. I thought, hello. <laughs> well, happen to get lass a lift? Hey, it'll give her more than that, kid, if you ask me. Oh, it don't mean to say there's all going on, does it? Oh, I and I bet as fair as I bought me all garden. Hey, you could be taking her out, you know, come to think of it. Taking her in, you mean? Well, anyway, she's old enough to look after herself. Uh, anyway, if there is all going off, you know, it could be to our advantage. How do you make that out? Well, she's on our side, isn't she? I mean, this shopping hour. We wouldn't have got that before she come. Hey, I think she's got it just where we want it. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's that finished. Fancy a cup of tea? Oh, yes, please. OK, I'll put the kettle on. They are hard going, Harrison's accounts. Oh, it's a flight of fancy calling them accounts at all. The mostly jottings on the back of baked beans labels. Oh. <laughs> I'll get it. Oh. Oh. Now then, we can let him hold those. Oh. Let him oh, hold morning, those. <laughs> you do me a job. Morning, Emily. <coughs> morning. And how's Tracy today? Right. Look, Lovey. Oh. I brought you something to give to your little pet. Oh. Try him with that. <laughs> oh, I just popped in to say thank you for last night. My word. She can cook. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I was just about to put the kettle on, actually. Well, don't make a cook for me, uh, because, as I, I say, I can't stay. I've just popped in to, uh, to say thank you. Oh, and I've, uh, I've brought a couple of letters. Will you do them for me? Yes, yeah, sure, that's what we're here for. Any chance of this afternoon? Mm -hmm. I should have got round to them ages ago. I'll put you on top of the pile. Well, that's very nice of you. Well, I'd better be going, now how it is. Yes. See you later. Yes. Bye. 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 Oh, he's <laughs> nice, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, I think he's smashing. Ever so warm. And he doesn't take things for granted, not like some fellas. No, he, he does seem very thoughtful. He's very taken with you. Oh, I think that's just his manner. I think he's friendly with everybody. Yes, but he's extra friendly with you. Well, as a matter of fact, last night he was being very helpful about business matters, you know. How do you mean? Well... You know, I've got some money, the compensation for Ernest, mainly. Well, he was saying that he could put it to work for me, invest it properly, you know. Well, what makes him such an expert? I wouldn't have thought running a pet shop was big business, exactly. Well, apparently he's got all sorts of investments. Oh, get away. You can never tell who's rolling in money, can you? I'll go and put the kettle on. It's boring lying in bed, isn't it? Might be boring to you, Stan Lick, but it's not boring to me. I mean, when you're on the go from morning till night, slaving away all the hours God sends, ooh, lying in bed isn't boring. Stop picking on me, will you? You're always picking on me. Look, all I say is 
bed was, I'm thankful to be having the rest. Nag, 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 nag. No wonder I'm ill. Now, I don't nag you. You'd know about it if I did my word. You do nag, you do so. I never nag you. Now, I don't. Come on, admit it. I don't nag you, do All I? right, all right, all right. Let it rest. Oh, my head's swimming. I've gone all muzzy now. I feel rotten. Oh, rotten. Fellas don't know what it is to feel rotten. I bet I feel worse than you do. I think my voice might be going and all. No such flaming look. Right, Albert, what's yours? About time and all. I've been studying here ten minutes while you've been nattering. I was not nattering, I was serving. What do you want? Half a mile. Oh, big deal. From the fuss you were making, anybody would think you were buying drinks all round. Oh, well, you can't afford that on an old age pension. Any road, my orders is as important as anybody else's. And it's only if you to get shirty with me just because you're bloke, sludgy duke. Don't take any notice of Albert. Don't let him get you down. Get me down? I may not show it, but inside I'm laughing and turning handsprings. There hasn't been a fella born yet. It's worth showing a tear over. Hey, 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 when does that leave me there? I don't like the sound of that much. Well, are you going to give me cause to shed tears? Oh, no, I don't suppose so. No, well, shut up then. <laughs> what I'm saying is, love, is that anybody can get a fella, but what really counts is you've still got friends. Like you two, you mean? That's what counts, you know, having friends, when you're in trouble. Do you know, I understand what you're saying. You want me to move back into your place. Eh? You're offering me my flat back. No! Uh, well, we would, love. I mean, you know that. Only uh, <clears throat> my mother might come visit him. <laughs> Don't get your tights in a twist. I'm only kidding. I should have moved out long ago. I was only under your feet. No, you weren't, Beth. It's OK, Alf. I'm well suited where I am. Definitely. Us lynches have us pride, you know. No, I don't think people are actually community-minded anymore, Ken. Well, you could be right, you could be right. I mean, that's probably why they're holding this special week, you know, trying to get people to think that way again. What did you say it was called? National Community Week. It's in the middle of next month. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, they have a national week for everything. Hopscotch, mixed bathing, you name it. Yeah, true, true. But this is a little more worthwhile than most. Yeah, but it's not as easy as that, is it? I like feeling community-minded. Because, I mean, for one thing, people don't live all their lives in the same place anymore. No, but we've still got a community here, at least a bit of one. I mean, we've still got the Bush Telegraph, for instance. I mean, some happens in Arkwright Street, and they know in Jubilee ter Terrace two minutes later. Yeah, but go another a couple of streets further on and you're in a different country. Ah, true, yes. Mate, it's no flipping good having a go on this shopping hour and early closing day, you daft that. Not when all the shops are shut. Oh, are ah, you right? I don't know. You'd starve without me, you lot. Hey, how about that for a proper rota? That's all right to me. When do we start? Today. Oh, good. That's me, then. Four o'clock this afternoon. Right. All right, Flower. Give us a pint, will you? Why, it's Nush, yes. How are the patients doing? Yes, hi, it's Mrs. Alton. Suffering, Mrs. Walker. Bed fast and still suffering. Mind you, they're in very good hands, you know. Have you tried your little blanket bath yet? Listen, I'm friendly with them, but not that friendly. I shall call in and see Mrs. Alden this afternoon. Oh, that'll be nice, Mrs. Walker. She'll be dead chuffed about that. Mrs. Walker. Is it? If you were ill in bed, would you want Hilda to visit you? I certainly should not. Why do you ask? No reason. No reason. I'll clear away if we've all finished. Oh, I'll give you a hand. No, no, you carry on. I can cope with these. Grace will give me a hand, won't you? You think you take some of these for me? Yes. Are you? Oh, good. You take that one. Well, at least you can read Arnold's writing. Not like some people. Oh, you're on to Arnold's letter, are you? Yeah, well, he did say he wanted them this afternoon, so I thought I would while I was in the mood. Didn't you say Arnold was supposed to be some sort of a financial whiz kid? Oh, not quite that, but he's a... Uh... Very experienced in investing substantial sums of money. Well, it doesn't sound as if he can have much of his own. Oh, what do you mean? Well, this letter. It's to his bank manager. It sounds to me as if Arnold's replying to some sort of a ticking off. Deirdre. Look, Emily, you can't help reading people's business letters if they give them to you to type, can you? I mean, I can hardly do it with my eyes shut. Well, no, of course not. It sounds as if Arnold is saying, will the manager be very nice and let him keep his overdraft going? Oh, I see. Sounds as if Arnold's sure to the readies, just like the rest of us.
never talk to me. It's like being married to a horse or some other dumb animal. What are you talking about? Of course I talk to you. No, you don't. Oh, you say things like, where's my dinner or what we're having for us tea. Sometimes you say something different, like, why haven't I got a pair of socks? You don't talk to me. I do talk to you. Go on, then, talk to me now. Look, I'm trying to do my football pulls, aren't I? See? You can't do, can you? You yeah. can't do a proper conversation like an intelligent person. Yes, I can. Go on, then, let's hear you. Well, what about? Well, anything. You pick a topic, somewhat interesting, what we can discuss. Hilda, I'm feeling poorly. Oh, see, I knew you couldn't do it. I can. Uh, look, th these football pools, th they use Australian teams on them. How do you mean? Well, we don't play football in England in summer, you see, so they use Australian teams. Well, what about it? Well, so they've got funny names. You, you can't understand. Look, here's one. Eidelberg. Well, I mean, that's abroad, isn't it? Well, Australia's abroad. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. It's down under. But well, it's the same thing. No, abroad is like, uh, like, like Germany, not Australia. Oh. Well, go on then. What about them? These teams you're on about? Well, these teams. Just, I met the fellow in the flying horse. He'd been out there, and he told me that these teams are like our, our Sunday league teams, you know, and they play out in the wild, miles from anywhere, in the desert. And sometimes, if they're a man short, they use a kangaroo. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you, see, you can't judge, can you? I mean, you can't judge form like that. You might as well just use a, use a pen. Is that what you call a conversation? Eh? Hey? I asked you for a conversation, and all I get's a load of rubbish about kangaroos and football teams. You're never satisfied, are you? Oh. Here. What's that? Oh, maybe Eddie. Well, I know it's Eddie, but what's he doing down there? Perhaps he's making a sandwich. To do with banging about. And you know, it's not that long since you had your dinner. Only soup. Yeah, I'm half the loaf. Oh, you're a greedy pig, you, and you're supposed to be ill. Well, you know what they say? Feed a cold and starve a fever. Oh, no, it's feed a fever, starve a cold. Oh, well, I must have a fever then. Does Summary have one hour? Emily? Pardon? I said, does Summary have one hour or two? Oh, uh, one, I think. Uh, yes, one. Yeah, I thought it did. It just looked funny somehow. You have gone very quiet. Oh, I was just thinking. What about, if that's not a rude question? Nothing, really. Oh, come on, Emily. You've been quiet ever since I mentioned Arnold's letter to his bank manager. Oh, yes, I admit I, I was thinking about that. You see, Deirdre... <sighs> I got the impression, well, he seemed keen to help me and he was so positive that I ought to invest the money sensibly and yet, well, he did give me the impression that he had investments himself. What if he's short of money? Go on. Well, he's been very friendly towards me, very friendly, taking me out. And when we are out, he's most attentive. Well, why shouldn't he be? He's a very nice fella. Well, he seems nice, but can't help wondering why he's been so nice to me in particular. And now there's this business with the money. Hang on. Are you thinking he's after your money? Well, I don't want to think that, but why else would he be interested in me? Oh, don't be silly. Well, I'm being quite serious, Deirdre. I've no illusions about myself. I'm not pretty. I'm not vivacious or formal. Oh, come on, Emily. No, let's be honest. Let's be quite frank. There is no reason why Mr Swain should fancy me. Of course there is. Honestly, I don't know why you keep running yourself down. I'm not running myself down. I'm just facing facts. You're not, you know. You've got a very low opinion of yourself, and I don't know why. Look, I'm sure you're wrong. I'm sure Arnold likes you. And, well, why shouldn't he like you? You're a very nice woman. With some money. Hey, what's all the banging about? What are you doing? Oh. I've moved the furniture down for you, Hilda. It's what's known in the trade as a cabinet reshuffle. 
Do you get it? <laughs> what do you think you're playing at? Yeah, well, you get a better view of the memorial now, you see. It was perfectly all right before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. Look, just put it back the way it was. Oh, that yield it. Give it a chance. You might get to like it. Not only that, you see, there's a great approach now to the dartboard. Now, that is a definite plus. Listen, this is my house, and I'm not arguing with you. I'm just telling you. Oh, and I'm too poorly for a lot of madding. See who that is and get shots of them. It'll be Annie Walker. She said she was coming to visit. You are? Annie Walker? Oh, why the hell didn't you warn me? Keep her talking for a minute. Well, I'll kill you when I'm feeling better. Oh, well, Mrs Walker, come in. Thank you. Hilda's really looking forward to seeing you. Good. Oh. Annie Walker, you pie can. Oh, right. Now, here, don't you go showing me up. Oh, hell. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Walker, what a nice surprise. I've come see how you are, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, isn't that kind? Look, Stan, isn't that nice? Oh, very nice, yeah. Oh, make yourself comfortable, Mrs. Walker. Pull that chair up. <laughs> oh, just throw Stan's pants on the bed end. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I won't come any closer. No, no, better not. You don't want to be getting our germs. We don't want anybody else's germs. Well, tell me, Mrs. Alden, how are you feeling? Oh, terrible. Terrible. Splitting head, chest pains, weak as a kitten. Mind you, I'm a lot better than I was. Well, you're moving in the right direction. Yes, and uh, stands on the mend, though, aren't you, Chuck? Oh, slowly. Very slowly. Good, good. You, uh... You won't have been in this room before, Mrs. Walker. No, no. Uh, fortunately, the necessity hasn't arisen. Stan's going to decorate next week. Oh, my hell is... Oh. <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Ogden? Oh, it's his chest, you know. It's still very painful. <laughs> well, he was going to decorate before, only, of course, he's been that busy, and then what with being ill. <laughs> Kettle's on. Uh, not on my account, please. I can only stop a moment. Oh, it's no trouble, Mrs Walker. Eddie's very willing. I'm administering to their every need, Mrs Walker. Do you know what they call me? Lawrence Nightingale. You're going to make some tea? Come out somewhere to eat? I don't know how you do it, Stan. He can't half shift it, that lad. Talk about a sludge gulper. And that's when he's ill. Well, I've got to build my strength up, haven't I? Oh, all right. The kettle'll be boiling. Where did the cups sit there? Oh, well, I think you took them downstairs, Addy. She put them under the bed. Under the bed? They are and all. What are the mugs doing under the bed, Hilda? Definitely the wrong sort of china for under the bed. Isn't that right, Mrs Walker? <laughs> hey, it's half four, Ida. Better get off, then. Yeah. Hey, you lucky beggar. Well, you'll have your turn. What's up, Ida? You ill or something? Oh, it's my shopping hour. Your what? I'm first on road to Lightfoot shopping hour. Shopping hour? Well, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, it's all agreed, you know. Pauline's agreed, eh? Agree what, for God's sake? A shopping hour on a rota basis. Time off during the week to get our shopping in while the places are open. We talked to her with Pauline and she's OK, dear. <laughs> no way. How do you mean, no way? It's all been settled. Over my dead body, it's been settled. And yours too, if necessary. Well, look at me, am I going or what? Yeah, Pauline's management, you know, and she said it were a deal. I'm the management, and I said forget it. Now get that coat off, Ida. It's an hour till knocking off time. Hello, Mr. Swade. Come on in. Oh, thanks. Emily in? Yes. Ah. Oh, hello again. For you. Oh, how lovely. Oh, just a little thank you for that wonderful dinner you cooked me last night. Oh, did you manage to get that typing done, Deirdre? Yes, it's all ready for you on the table. Oh, just the job. You know, that's the first thing all day that's gone according to plan. I've been running around like a scalded cat. Hardly stopped. Not had a cup of tea since lunch. Oh, well, you're in luck, cos Emily was just going to put the kettle on, weren't you, love? Yes, I don't see why not. Oh, they don't make one for me. I'll go and pick Tracy up. Oh, I was wondering where little madam had got to. Oh, she's been at her pals all afternoon. I'll just go and get her. See ya. You've had a hard day then, Arnold. Well, I don't know about hard. A bit hectic. I've been to see um, a litter of pups that a chap wants me to sell. Red setters. Ten of them. Wonderful dogs. But all as mad as hatters, you know. And what with one thing and another, it's been rush, rush, rush. Still, better busy than bankrupt, eh? Hey, she'll sort it out. Mm. 
I want that to bet on it. Our phone chesters and they've okay delivery on the new order. Right. Now look, what's all this nonsense about having an hour off each week to do a bit of shopping? Pardon? <laughs> well, I just caught one of the girls waltzing off to do a bit of shopping and she said that you told them they could have an hour off each week to do it. Well, it's not unusual now. A lot of works do it. Oh, yeah, but not here. Not in my works. Look, just a minute. But what are you playing at giving that lot an extra hour off without my say so? Well, the girls made out a good case. It keeps them happy and working well. You hired me to take decisions. I didn't hire to cost me a fortune. You would have felt sure you'd be all in favour. You just calmly cut an hour off their working week, just like that, without my say so. Look, I'm running a business here, darling, not a charity. I mean, you're a bit stupid. Do you mind not talking to me like that? And incidentally, it's a bit different to the way you were talking to me at two o'clock this morning. Yeah, well, don't drag that into it. I mean, uh, this is business, that was pleasure. Look, I'm not cutting an hour off their working week. I mean, what do you think I am, Father Christmas? Yeah, but you're just not thinking about it, Mike. You're not going to lose by it. Exactly, because it's not going to happen. It's about time someone sold them as well. Right, girls, uh, can you just uh, hush down a bit? I want to get this point over, so I'm going to tell you loud and clear. Now, all this nonsense about having an hour off to do a bit of shopping, right, it's all a complete misunderstanding. Are you telling us we can't have it? You were never going to get it. Right. Now, it's 50 minutes to knocking off time, so let's get a bit of work done, shall we? You remember what work is, don't you? It's what pays your wages. Do you realise what you've done? <laughs> I've just solved your foul up. Look, I hired you to solve situations like this, not cause them. Completely destroyed my authority with those girls. You've as good as told them to take no notice of anything I say. Yeah, well, you'll have to be a bit more careful in future. There is no future. You've made my job impossible. Oh, come on. You're just a bit upset because you stepped out of line and I made you step back in. You deliberately humiliated me out there. Well, you can take your job and your fast car and your charm and stick the lot, because I've had enough of it. And you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, back to the grind. Very tying, a pet shop, you know. It must be. You've quite a responsibility with all those creatures to look after. Uh, look, uh, one day, uh, when you've got an hour or two, why don't you come round? I'll show you the whys and wherefores. Oswald, I've been thinking about what you were saying the other night. Oh, yes, what was that? About making the best investment with money. Well, you need to, you know. Otherwise, it's just steadily losing its value. You've got to make it work for you. Yes, I, I realise that's all true. I'm glad you've been thinking about it. Because I'd... I'd very much like to help, if you'll allow me. You know, I'm... I'm very interested in you, Emily. Very. Well, I'm sure you know that. Cuddy's head. What do they sound like? Oh, what do people sound like? They sound like perfectly decent folk. Look, you don't need to go mad, you know. They're coming to see a shop, not a palace. They want place right if folk are coming to look. They'll like it, they'll buy it. Yeah, and if it's a tip, they'll not like it. This place is never a tip. You're getting neurotic. See, will you shut up and get some of that dust off them tins? Do you know them artichoke carts? They haven't shifted in months. Ah, uh, you shouldn't have got so many in. Yeah, Annie Walker made me get them. She bought one tin. Uh, oh, my God, don't say that It's you. only Kenneth. Oh. Hello, sorry to bother you. You're all right. See, yeah. you. What do you want? Uh, a couple of apples of plonk. Oh, you best help yourself. All right. Looking lively, then, is it? Uh, well, it's convivial, if not exactly feverish. <laughs> You're not coming along? No, uh, we've got somebody coming looking round. Oh, yeah, promising. Oh, well, no one has been. A bit of interest, you know. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, look, um, just pay me for one. The other's on us. Oh, that's very decent of you. And give them our best wishes and what's it called? Uh, felicitation. Yes, right. Oh, well, oh, well. We'll be sorry to see you go. 
Aye. Well, let's hope we're doing the right thing. Oh, I think we're doing the right thing in my mind. Mind you, we'll be sorry to leave one or two people, you know, but still, it's a question of what we want out of life, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's a question I've never quite answered myself. Well, it took me an elf long enough, didn't it? I'll tell you what I want out of life. A bit of peace and quiet. That's all I want. Ooh, why you want to smoke when you're in there, I don't know. I'm reading the paper. Well, there's a perfectly good house for reading the paper in. Why can't you sit in that like a civilised person? I want a bit of peace and quiet. Now, belt up. Oh, lovely. Ah, oh, just look at these plants. I don't know. You struggle to try and bring some of green and living into the world, and what chance have you got? Even this begonia's letting me down. Thought at least that would have had a try for me, but look at it. Just giving up. I don't know why you bother. Because they give me a bit of company, that's why. Which is more than I can say for some people. What shut themselves in the lavvy reading last week's paper. <laughs> Fat lot of company, some people. Let's go to Emily Vision. No, no, I'm not going down there. Well, wish them well. Might be a few drinks. Look, I'm not going where I'm not invited. If we're not good enough, we're not good enough. I think they're a cut above us, you know. Here, have you set fire to yourself in there, or what? I'm smoking, aren't I? Well, there's somebody burning rubbish, then. Mind you, I suppose she is a cut above in a way, isn't she? Wealthy woman in her own right. Must have got thousands for Ernest. Yeah, and I don't suppose that's escaped his attention, either, the queer fella. Plain as the nose on your face. Oh, you know, there's definitely somebody burning rubbish. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily and Arnold. Emily, Emily. Emily and Arnold. Speed. Come on, give us a speech. Oh, come on. Yes, yeah, speak. So I'm not Emily, going come to on. make a speech. I'm not sure I could anyway. Oh. I feel rather light in the head. Oh, Emily, <laughs> off two glasses. No, honestly. Oh. Listen, is when I've had a drink that I do make speeches. You ask Len. I'll come out with a couple of scorches and <laughs> a drink or two. <laughs> well, before I get hopelessly tiddly, I would just like to make a tiny little speech. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Speaking as. I think I can say one of Emily's oldest friends. I think I can give you a few years, dear. <laughs> well, we have known each other for a very long time. Well, it is a long time, Emily. <laughs> oh, didn't it fly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd just like to say that we're all very happy for you to see you so happy and everything. And uh, well, it's just wonderful that you've actually found somebody after all you've been through. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think it's only fair on to give you a word of warning because mm -hmm. you ought to know that Emily has got a lot of friends yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. well, we're very true friends and we think very highly of you, Emily, yeah. so, uh, well, you'd better look after her or else. <laughs> 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 um, now, I just want to uh, say that I hope you'll both be very happy together and, and I'm sure you will be. I think that's all I want to say. Aww. Oh, so uh, here's to your future health and happiness. Yeah. Health, yeah. health and happiness. And I second everything she says, and I'm bigger than her. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely said, maybe. Yes. Well, you oh, are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I can't let that one go on, can I? Uh, and seeing as uh, my fiance. Oh, I like the sound of that. I'll say that again. Uh, <laughs> my fiance, seeing that she's a little emotional, I suppose it must be up to me, and none of you know me from Adam. But I'll say this I can't be all that bad, or I wouldn't be stood here calling Emily my fiance. <laughs> Just wouldn't have anything to do with me. And the only danger is that I might get a bit big headed on the strength of it. <laughs> Still, as time goes on, I hope that Emily's friends are going to be my friends, because I know she's very well loved around here. And you needn't fret. She'll continue to be very well loved in my care in the future days to come. Aww, so I'll give you one toast. Emily. 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 Very good. Mm. Oh, right, well, just in case anybody else has got any more toast, I better fill everybody up. Yes, well, I do. Smash it. Here we Did are. you expect oh, this? You then. Do well, I, I'm very happy for them both. Yeah. Well, I mean, it'll take a bit of them getting used to it. I mean, yourself. Yes, I, I suppose I'll have to make some adjustments. Yes. Where are you thinking of living? 
Well, that's one of the adjustments. They've uh, not said anything as far as that, or if they have, they've said nothing to me about it yet. Oh, well, they'll be spoilt for choice, won't they? I mean, with them both having their own place. Rather nice position to be in. Very. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. Right, well, who's been avoiding who, then? Well, I haven't been avoiding anybody. Oh, must have been me. Well, there's no need. I'd like to think not. Yeah, oh, there's no point, is there? I mean, if you've got something to say and you don't want to say it, then you start avoiding people. Ken? Yeah. Oh. Have you got a mixer, yeah. please? Excuse me. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Not for me, thanks for sticking to orange juice. Oh, well. very well. Thanks wise. very much. Very wise. Uh, but I thought you got a household lined up. Well, we put a deposit on. Oh, there you are, then. Yeah, but can we afford it? I'll have to stop work now, and it looks like we can't. Well, you put up a bit of a fight, kid. You need a home of your own. I know what I'm talking about. I think it's impossible, really, but we keep putting off saying we definitely can't have it. Hey, come on, let's have some music. What records have we well, got? Well, I'm looking for something. Hey, there's one that I brought somewhere there. Congratulations. Oh, oh. oh ah, there it is, yeah. yeah. Go on, stick it on. A little bit. It's on there somewhere. It's on track four, kid. Yeah, well, everybody will know the words of that, Rita. And if they don't, we can bust skip. Well, I bought it, you know, when Gordon passed his accountancy. But as it happens, we didn't have a part. Oh, there you are. Hey, it's not that. Hey, there's no sugar for me tea. Just listen to it. Have a good mind to call the police. No sugar. Well, it'll do you good to go without. I can't drink tea without sugar. You know I can't. Oh, well, go next door and get some, then. That'll be short. Give them a knock, they'll open up for you. Look, you nip to Elsie, she'll have some. Oh, can't you see I'm busy? Won't take you long. Oh, Stanley, can you do nothing for yourself? All right, I'll go. If I play my cards right, I might get more than a cup of sugar. <laughs> If not, back by morning. Don't come looking. Oh, you're disgusting, you. Here, give me that here. I'll go when I finish the into these. And you've been very shows. I'd like to tell everyone that you're in love with me. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, so could I love it well, first, do you? Yes. I yeah, yeah. Hey, I wish I could sing, don't you? Have you got a record of when we were young in May? I don't think they go back that far, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> but they go back in May or something. <laughs> young in May? What the hell's going on? Give me, give me a hand, look. Here, give me a hand. Oh, give me a hand. Hang on a minute. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> Oh. <coughs> easy, easy. <coughs> oh, oh. Yeah, Joe, put it down against the window. <coughs> Are you all right, love? Oh, she's not all right at all. Well, she's breathing her old. Here, you stay with her. Fetch a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's what we're going to find out, isn't it? I don't know. Somebody's knocking on the door. Somebody at the door. Hey, Chelsea! What did she say? Oh, right. I mean, Nobody rang the phone right. with me. Well, I will. You get down there. Oh, oh God. Oh, it's Elsie. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my
Oh, get over to the centre and get Dr Crawford. Right. They'll be in that small room where they're doing the first aid. Do you know it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a miracle it's so near. Tell yes. burning, mostly smoke. Yeah. Right, look, we've got to get her somewhere more comfortable. Yes, get her into my house. Oh, yeah. Is Martin in the house? Martin? Martin? Yes. Martin? Come on, come on. 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 Oh, oh good, Joe. <coughs> right, well, oh, we better get some water under this, isn't oh, we? Oh, it's made a hell of a mess of this sofa. Yeah. Hell of a mess. Yeah. Lucky the whole place didn't go up. Yeah. Right, stand back. Look Can you get some more? Yeah, I've got some here. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Was Elsie? They've taken her to Emily's. How long was she in there? Uh, I don't know. Mr Ogden found her. Hilda found her. Been there some time. Um, shall we get an ambulance? Uh, no, let me see her first. Right. We can always take her in a car afterwards. Okay. Just cos I'd made a pot of tea and sent Hilda for a cup of sugar. That's all. Matter of life and death. Makes you think, doesn't it? Mind you, a well, good job we did run out of sugar. I was just saying to Mrs Walker. Oh, is Elsie any row? Has anybody oh, said? Oh, she'll be all right. Doctor's with her now, but she has to come round. It was a near do row. Plenty of smoke, wasn't there? Oh, you couldn't breathe on it. Thick it were. What do you think caused it? Well, it was a sofa, weren't it, Stan? I think she fell asleep with a fag in her hand. It's easy done when you're daft. I've done it myself. <laughs> you know, I can still feel that smoke on my chest. It's just coming home to me now. I can see her lying there, face like death. Oh, it gave me the orders, I tell you. Do you know what? I'm beginning to feel funny all over. Fred, get Mrs Ogden a glass of brandy. I think she can do with it. Oh, that is kind of you, Mrs Walker. It wouldn't come amiss just now. <laughs> one brandy for the heroine of the hour. Oh, go on. I only did what you'd do yourself. I think I'll have one, too. Uh, make that three, Fred. <coughs> I'd be slightly happier if you spent the night in hospital. She can certainly spend the night here. Well, as long as someone keeps an eye on her. Well, there are two of us, and I'm a very light sleeper. She can sleep in my bed. I'll be all right in my own bed, honestly. Uh, you're not to argue. No, you're definitely not to argue. I don't think you could at the moment, could you? Not really, no. You're very lucky to be saying anything at all. Now, you'll have a real bit of a cough for a day or two, because you've irritated your lungs, you see. So I don't want you going to work until I've seen you again. And you'll not feel like a cigarette for a few days, either. So why don't you take the opportunity and give them up, hmm? They can kill you all sorts of ways. Get this made up as soon as you can. <laughs> It'll make her a bit easier in the night. Yes. And I'll drop in tomorrow. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Now you hear me. Chuck the fags. <laughs> well, thank oh. you very much, Doctor. <laughs> Could you face a cup of tea now, Elsie? Oh, kid. I'm sorry I spoiled the party. Oh, don't be daft. <laughs> Yeah, do you suppose you want to cover it up, Al? Well, I don't think it's going to be worth very much, do you? Oh, well, still. Yeah, she might be able to do something with it. Oh, I think it's a bit. All the same, I'll get Len to put a tarp hole in yeah. it. Yeah, right, well, come on, let's get it out. Oh, yeah. I say, oh. doesn't this smell oh, great? Yeah, it's on the oh. cushions and oh, everything. Right. Oh. Do you think these curtains would go through the washing machine? Yeah, I think they would. Oh, well, I'm taking them home with me, then. Right. <laughs> hey, come on. Uh, let's get this carpet oh, yes. up. It's so cool. Okay, let's shift this first, dear. Yeah, 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 where are we going to put it, though? Well, we'll have to put it over a line. Yeah, yeah. What if it rains? Well, we'll have to trust to look. Oh, good lord. Oh. Start at this end. Yeah. All right. Ah, come on. Come, come on, Andy. Don't slip. All right. Oh, right. This is so, so good. Well, well, do you want some milk? Ian, yeah, lads, yeah. this is your next job. Can you get that in yard? <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Oh, oh, do you know dear. where the all-night chemist is? Aye. Oh, well, could he go down there with this? Well, of course, no bother. Yeah, OK, look, I, I can manage this. Oh, oh God. started on the place. That's oh, well, good. the sooner it's done, love, get rid of the smell. Yes. Mm. I wonder if she's insured. Well, I hope so. I mean, she's going to need decorating. Oh, yes. and yeah. the well, the cavalry's here. They weren't needed this time. Mm. No, no, this time we were lucky. 
I'm afraid you've caught us on the hop. There's been a bit of a drama down the street. Why, we saw fire engines. Not serious, I hope. Oh, no, somebody set fire to a sofa, that's all. Oh, you hear some terrible things about stuff in sofas. I mean, there's some stuff is poisonous, you know, if it burns. Mm. Gives off fumes, like, kills you in seconds. The lady concerned, she's all right, apparently, yes. And chip pans. Oh, quite often it's a chip pan, you know. Do you remember, George, when our door has set fire to chip pans? Hey, aye. Oh, the old we... kitchen went, oh, lucky the house didn't follow. Oh, it were a conflagration. Surely went to door. I think it were gas man come. Oh, and of course it went up in seconds, you know. Mind you, gas is another thing, isn't it? Oh, we're surrounded by danger. Hey, will we have a look at shop, love? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, yes, I, I am looking, yes. It's... Uh... Very nice. Uh, yes, well, you can see it's all uh, sort of uh, laid out. I mean, it's compact. But, but mind, there's plenty of space. Oh, aye. Looks in good order. Uh, yeah, um, we have seen some, haven't we, George? Oh, we have. Oh, we, we have, Was aye. it in Wally Range, that one? What one? You know, we were like Aladdin's cave gone mouldy. Oh, I weren't Wally Range. Stop up road. Oh, I've alerted the authorities. Yes, I've had the health inspectors in. Oh, I have. And they had dirty boots. Oh, you've seen a few shops then, have you, mister? Oh, yes, we are. I uh, will uh, keep looking till we're satisfied. It's always been our dream to own a corner shop. And we've been thinking ever since he got his redundancy money. I mean, 20 years he worked for them, didn't you, George? <laughs> 20 years? Oh, I don't care what money they give you. A month's notice, I think it's terrible. Isn't yes, it? the shocking bad times, aren't but they? But we've always wanted to shop and be our own masters. <laughs> I mean, you rule your own little world behind this counter, don't you? Aye, we please ourselves. <laughs> ah, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, will we have a look at your uh, accommodation, love? Yes, yes, I, I think we can move on to the accommodation now, George. Uh, go through. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be through in a minute. I'll just, uh, I'll just bolt the door. She's mad. Ah, that she is. Look, they've got the money, so I'll keep smiling. <coughs> Here. <coughs> And I, I can manage, I can manage. I'll swallow it down and you take take some more before you go to sleep. Yes, miss. How are you feeling now? I've, I've, I feel fine, actually. I really didn't know what was going on. I just just suddenly had this yelling. I found myself on the step with Stan yelling his head up. It was uh, Hilda who found you. And if she hadn't, Elsie, she only came round to borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> little cups of sugar. It's not fair. <laughs> It is. It is. You don't know. The times I've seen her stood there with a little cup in her hand. Look, uh, can you get a glass of wine down here? Oh, do you think she ought too, to? Too true. Yes, go on, you try it. Thanks, oh. Cheers. Here's two elder and a little cup of sugar. <laughs> a uh, sweet sherry for Mavis. And what will you have, Hilda, apart from a medal? Oh, well, it's a brandy, if you don't mind, Kenneth. Uh, a brandy and uh, a pint, stand. I can no, it's a funny thing when you come to think about it, anyway. How your life can be snuffed out just like that. Here one minute, gone the next. But I believe, you see, I believe there's like a providence watching over you. Else, why was I there, eh? You were catching a cup of sugar, Hilda. Exactly. But why just at that moment? Cos I threw the pot of tea. See? It's all linked together, like a chain. Well, it was very lucky, any road. Oh, I don't think it would have anything to do with luck. No, I believe I was drawn to that house. But you wouldn't go to that house. You told me to go shop. But you didn't go, did you? But I told you to go to Elsie's, didn't I? Yeah, and I went, that's the thing. I didn't want to go. Cos, you know, I ain't borrowing off anybody, even if it is only a cup of sugar what you'd lend anybody yourself. <laughs> no, it were against me will, you see. I was drawn to that house against my will. If you'd gone when I first said, there'd have been no trouble. I went <laughs> when I was meant to go. Yes, well, uh, I think we've seen everything. Yes, I think you have. Have you asked everything you're supposed to ask? Aye. And I think I can say I'm very favourably impressed. Well, then. Uh, so any road, uh, uh, we'd be in touch. I will, uh have to complete us deliberations. Yes, well, you know where to find us. Aye. Well, uh, good night, then. Oh, good night. I'll just, um... Uh, good night. Good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, fire off! I could never go! Have they seen everything? Did you see it in the bathroom? She fell out of her head down, cludgy. <laughs> Do you think they do 
you this sort of thing just for a night out. She's daft enough, you know. Wouldn't surprise me. Still, you've got to treat them all the same, you know. <laughs> and he never said a word. Well, he knew his onions, though. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, listen, then. Um, what do you think? Do you think they're interested? Well, I don't know. Hey, it's a thought, though, isn't it? I reckon when it comes to yakking, she's got Hilda Ogden beat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had to come round and see how you were. I, I can't thank you enough, Hilda. Oh, go on. That's what neighbours are for. I, I'm all right, really. It's just a bit here, that's, you know. Oh, yeah, well, you will be. Really, mm. I think it's time we got you to bed. Oh, would somebody please leave a note for Marty? There's one being left uh, for him. Anyway, you'll live. That's the main thing. Slight Piccadilly. <laughs> <laughs> and as long as you do, you know what I think. I think there's a special bond between you and me, cos I was sent to you in your hour of need. Did you ever get your cup of sugar, Hilda? <laughs> <laughs> What's okay? happened? We come back for a coffee and somebody's nicked the sofa. <laughs> What are you doing, love? Oh, just thinking. Thinking about what? Well, about them people. Well, not just them. We've actually had people looking round. That's what we wanted, isn't it? You know what we're doing, don't you? We're retiring to the country. We're not retiring, we're moving. Yeah, well, anyway, I suddenly know we're going. Yeah, we're going. These. You won't. They're in here somewhere. <laughs> She's like that. She won't give up. I know. I wouldn't have started looking myself. I'd have made me buy these. Gotcha. Little devils. I knew they're in there somewhere. <sighs> there you are, love. Thank you. All this trouble just for a packet of serviettes. Hey. And not that they aren't beautiful. I should think so and all. I think that the right accessories are very important, though. I mean, the right serviettes can make a meal. I've always found them a bit chewy myself. <laughs> oh, go on. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, having somebody special around? Me? Oh, heavens, no. I should be so lucky. Now it's Emily again. Another candlelit supper for Arnold. Oh. I wouldn't care, but I don't think he'd notice if she had last night's evening news on table. Honestly, talk about starry eyed. Stop turning green, you. I beg your pardon. Do you know, this one's dead jealous. I am not. She can't understand how Emily's on her way to the altar for the second time when she hasn't made the trip once. Oh, it's nothing to do with that. Deirdre, come on. Tell her she's got to exert herself. Tell her she's got to get out there and show the goods off. Well, Emily didn't exactly exert herself, does she? It's you I'm worried about. No, 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 she's right, though. I mean, Emily does tend to just sit there and let them all come to her, and they do. Don't make her worse. <laughs> Don't worry, Mavis. You know what they say about marriage? It's something that them outside are trying to get into and them inside are trying to get out of. <laughs> See you. Try love, try Bye bye. I do wish you wouldn't show me up like that. Who's so showing you up? I'm just telling the truth. Well, then I wish you wouldn't. Not if it means discussing my intimate details with everybody that comes into the shop. I mean, Deirdre is not all that much of a friend, you know. Go on, we're all pals together here. Well, not as far as I'm concerned, we're not. It matters of that nature if we're discussing with very good friends, not just acquaintances. Sorry, Mavis. So you should be. I am, love. I am. As a matter of fact, I was rather upset. But it was nothing at all to do with marriage. It was simply that, well, Emily and I have been very good friends and we've gone out together. Now we can't. So I think I'm entitled to be a bit upset. Of course you are. Hey, and you're missing now, not being married. It's not all that clever. Oh, will you give over nagging and just get me my breakfast? I'm not nagging. All I'm saying is take your overalls off before you sit down at the table. I'll give over mithering then. Now, look, they're cleaner than anything else I've got to put on. Done now to get them dirty. If I didn't nag as you call it, Bert, you'd have this blooming house like a big star you and I, Bert. Oh, right. come on, just give it a rest, will you? I've done a hard night's work. All I want is a little bit of peace and quiet and me egg and bane. Hard night's work? I thought you said you'd done note. 
I said I'd done out to get them dirty, clever clogs. I didn't say I'd done out. I mean, there's such a thing as uh, mental work, you know what I mean? Making decisions. Mm. Like uh, whether to go abundance or misera where, I know you. Hey, hey can't you hold a bit quieter, oh. you two? Well, hey, it's your mum, she's driving me mad. Well, you're getting fat on it, aren't you? <laughs> Do you want bacon and egg, love? Uh, no, I just have a piece of toast. You are feeling for two, you know, now. Oh, yeah, we both have a piece of toast. <laughs> hey, you'll have bacon, I'll have bacon and egg, mum. Oh, I know you will. You said you would. I will, love, I will. Here, get that down you, you won't do so bad. Uh, Mum, uh, Dad, look, we know that you said we could live here, you know, after we've had the baby and that, and um, we've talked it over and we think we ought to have our own house. Well, I thought you'd give him back word. No, we haven't that new one. We've been looking at some older houses. Yeah, there's one in Peterloo Place. Peterloo Place? Well, that's what you used to pay windard for. There's nothing wrong with Peterloo Place, is Oh, it? come on, it's a bit of a come down, Bert. Well, I said, though, innit? The price is a bit of a come down and all. Why, how much do you ask him? £7,250. Oh, well, that sounds fair enough to me. It uh, needs a lot doing to it. Gail, I meant what I said, love, about, you know, living yeah. here. I know you hey, did, I think but... we ought to get cracking, you know, and get in there. There's no need to rush. Well, what do we do, love? Wait till somebody else nicks in? Oh, come off it, Brian. That's his estate agents taught that. There's nobody queuing up to buy houses these days. Anyway, if your missus is not end up world, is it? You're far better off missing one or two of them, finding yourself trapped in wrong one. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. It's what? You had me run around like someone not right for that last one. Hey, we get to the builder's office, right? I get out of the car and say, Brian, run. Somebody might get there before us. Run, Brian. That was different. That was a new house. That was the one I wanted. Hey, what do you do with them, eh? Well, I warned you, sunshine, didn't I? You can't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> You can sulk as much as you like. I'm not taking you out of that car again. Yesterday's fiasco's enough for me. Why the heck I don't have to pick him? I paid for my own driving lessons as my husband won't even take me out practising. I don't want him to teach me to drive. Oh, no. Oh, just take me out now and again. But will he? Will he? Well, I've told you why not, so don't come it. Sandra Artie's husband taught her to drive. Glennie Owen's husband taught her to drive. Mm, no fool then. Oh, you're pig-headed, you. If you just have a quarter of the patience Mr Lorimer has... Oh, don't bring him into it. Listen, if you treated me the way you treat him, I might be more like him. And you know what I mean? If he told you to drive off the end of Blackpool Pier, you'd do it, but you won't do a blind thing, I tell you. Because you're not a qualified driving instructor. Well, why do you want me to teach you to drive, then? I don't want you to teach me to drive. I can drive. I just want you to take me out practising. Oh, I'm good enough for that, am I? Of course you are. You're cheeky. Oh, he's having a go at you, is he? Oh, just let him try. Uh, can you drive? Hey? Can you drive? You know, a car. Hey, I can't even ride a bicycle. There you are, you see? And she's had three husbands. Now, hang on just a minute. Go on, insult the customers. No, I'm just trying to make a point, love. Not everybody's husband teaches them to drive. I mean, if they've got any sense, they stand well back, and that's just what I'm doing. I don't think there's anything to do with sense in my case, love. My first husband couldn't even afford a car. Oh, don't talk to him. He's not worth bothering with. All I'm saying... Elsie needs serving. Sorry, Elsie. Well, it seems a pity to interrupt such a good row for two pounds of sugar, but there you go, two pounds of sugar. Come on, stop gulping two pounds of sugar. <laughs> holidays? I don't have time for holidays. They're for the working class. <laughs> I think what Mr Baldwin is trying to say is that he enjoys his work too much to leave it. <laughs> You've got to be joking. Oh, excuse me, one moment. Yeah. Over there, Sidney. Right, what do you want to find me? Yes, please. One of my storemen got a personal problem. Yeah. Who'd be a boss, eh? Could I have a pint and a large scotch, please, Mr. Yes. Uh, Betty, have you yes. done anything about your little problem? <coughs> the children? No, I haven't. Well, I still think you should fail in the NSPCC. Mm. Yeah. What was the name? Fletcher? Yes, Wayne and Sharon. The children are called, yes. yes. Well, I made a few discreet inquiries, but nobody seems to know anything about them. Yeah. It's him that I'm worried about, you know, the mother's new boyfriend. Oh, yeah, he's a nasty bit of work. There's something about him, you know. I mean, if I put the authorities on to him, I wouldn't put it past him taking it out on them little kids. Yeah, but wouldn't it be worse if he took it out on the kids without alerting the authorities? I think it's better that they know. Yeah. It's not easy, is it? No, nothing to do with people, ever is. Are you sure you want to stop for a bit of dinner, though? No, I only popped back for a couple of minutes to find this thing for Elsie. What was it, exactly? For an advert in one of last week's magazines for silk blouses. I told her about it. She said, could I let her have it? And I can't find it. Wish I'd not said anything. Look, I tell you what, leave it if you're in a rush. I'll have a look for you later. Oh, will you? Yeah. It's a picture of three girls in silk blouses, white, pink and blue. Whew. 
It smells good. Steak and guinea pie is Bert's favourite. <laughs> it's everybody's favourite. There's plenty, you know, if you want to stop. No, I can't. I should be rushed off. Hey, you're lucky you are. You're having steak and kidney pie. Hey, I want you. Now, look, do you want me to have a look at this house on Pete Lou place, or don't you? Because if you do, I can get an hour off work this afternoon. Like your mum said, there's no need to rush. Hey, don't blame me. I'm not. I feel just the same way as you do, and he knows it. He's just playing silly beggars. Wait. Well, don't blame me if it's gonna we can't get another. Hey, don't worry. She's right. There's no point in rushing, love. You know, I could do with you women if you didn't go changing your minds every ten flaming minutes. Hey, Brian. What? I want you to give me hand this afternoon, will you? I want you to help me move my bed to the iron foundry. I think it's quieter. I oh, don't talk flimmin' daft. Hey, what's up with him? He's noticed this house business. Not again. Bert, don't worry, cos Gail and me have got everything under control. You and me will go a little walk and all after tea. We'll have a look at Peter Little Place. What for? Well, we've got to take an interest, love. Are you joking? He's dominating our flaming lives. Oh. Yeah, this place used to be a sub post office at one time, you know. What? The shop? Yes, over there. Little grill, all the paraphernalia. Who was it had the shop at the time? Petty. Lionel Petty, ex army man. Used to run it like a guards depot. <laughs> can you remember that? Yeah, I can now you mention it. Yeah, must be what, 15, 16 years ago? <laughs> didn't last long, though. Don't know why, but it didn't. We never thought of opening one here, did we? No, there's no chance. I mean, they're talking about closing them all down, aren't they? You know, little post offices. Not that they will. I don't think they'll open any new ones, though. I make that 465. 465. Great, so. There we are. Hello, Weatherfield, 7217. Yes? Oh, I'm afraid he's in the shop at the moment. Can I tell him? He's letting me know this morning, Postmaster. That should be him now. Oh, so he should be all right, shouldn't you, with your background? I should think so. Still, you never know. Right, well, you'd better get it, cos I'm coming up for a cheap holiday. Right. See you. Ta-da. Who was that? Oh, it was Postmaster. It's turned you down. Oh, no! Why? Did he say why? Oh, yeah, he's all right, love. I'm not kid. You what? You know what you've got? What the hell are you playing it? Look, have we got it, haven't we? Everything's fine. Oh, as if I have enough to worry about without your stupid jokes. Come on, now, where's your sense of humour? <sighs> it's all right, love. It's all over now. I'll tell you what, tonight we'll, we'll we'll go and celebrate, eh? Of course, we've a lot to celebrate, haven't we? Oh, I'm sorry, love. <sighs> <laughs> We just closed, love. Was oh. there something important? I just wonder if you've got any bread left. Ah, of course, man. Here, I'll pay me tomorrow. Right. We're going out celebrating. Oh, why, well, yeah? Don't let me stop you. Have a nice time. We will, love. Right, I'm off, love. Don't forget to drop snack. <laughs> Somebody sounds to be having a good time. Oh, that's one of the girls from across the way. It's her birthday. I only had half a shandy. Oh, good luck to her. Listen, can I have a couple of packets of crisps, yeah. Betty? Preferably cheesy ones. OK, my love. Now, I thought you weren't too keen on our new crisps. Well, I can't tell a lie, Mrs Walker. I did go to the corner shop first, but they were just going out, so I thought I wouldn't bother them. I think they said they were celebrating something or other. That's nice. Must be something to do with the new property. There you are, love. Two packets of crisps. Hey, Thanks, do. And don't blame me. Blame our Tracy. Oh. She's the expert on crisps in our house. Ta-da. <laughs> ta, -da. ta -da, you know, she's turning into a very nice girl. Yeah. She's done it the hard way. Perhaps that's the way to do it, dear. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to be the queen of the nightclubs. What's this new place of Xanadu like? Oh, that's from a poem by Samuel Taylor Coldridge. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, not my scene, look. You had finished, had you? Oh, no, there's a lot more yet. They've got cloths on table, and I believe it's very nice. Pricey, you know, more like a dining club. So you better take somebody with you when you go there. No use trying to find somebody when you get there. Oh, well, in that case, you better phone Lynn. Tell him to get his own tea. Not me, love. I'd show you up. Tea, Mavis. Mavis doesn't want to be taken anywhere, thank you very much. Now, how does that make you feel? Only one thing left. Under the arches with a bottle of meths. Oh. See you. Oh. Hello, love. Still at it. We're not all bosses. <laughs> Here's Mavis in. I brought up pies. Mavis! Pies are here. And I 
I believe you're drawing your horns in as well, going to Peyton Place. Peterloo Place? Well, I knew it won at Tubber. I wouldn't exactly call it drawing our horns in. No, and neither would I, love. I mean, you're well out of them new housing estates. That's just all keeping up with the Joneses. Far better to have the nicest house in a crummy street than the worst house somewhere posh. We wouldn't have the worst house. Brian's oh, very I good know at that, love. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to make a point. Oh, if somebody gave you the chance of a new house, you'd go like a shot. Shut your gob and eat your pies. Go on. What's she done now? Uh, it's what she's not done. There's this house. It's all set for us to jump in and buy it. And I could do. But what happens? I mean, one minute she's all for it, so I'm halfway to the door. Before I get there, it's... Oh, Brian, I think we ought to wait. Go on, who do you think you're kidding? From the minute you stood in front of that preacher, you knew what it was going to be like. All men do. We are born with the knowledge. And apart from the... Uh, Privileged view. We jump in there, thick as two short planks, saying it's not going to happen to me. We don't expect any sympathy. But I'll give you a bit of advice, and here's the advice I'll give you. <laughs> if it's too hot in the kitchen, get out of the heat. Join the masses. Get a divorce. He's not that bad. Oh, but it could be that. That's my aim in life, you see. Cheering up people that are worse off than me. Not working, is it, love? Uh, not so you'd notice. All right, stay here. Crying your beer. But I'll tell you this, at this moment right now, there is a dolly little bird sitting in her fat in Prince's Road, looking in the mirror, worrying in case she's not good enough for me. So I'll let her stew for a bit. Arrive ten minutes late, off to the Xanadu, nice meal, few little drinkers, and then after that, whatever fate has to offer. And then tomorrow, oh, why be worried? It's a redhead. Ah, oh dear. Have a nice evening. Oh, take me notice. You're better off. Well, you will be, love. Don't have a go. All I said was you look rough tonight, and you do. Oh, you are a charming man. I'm your best friend, too. You smell of chips. Oh. Oh, he's a right big head, is that one? <laughs> well, he can't be conceited, I must confess. I think he has a serious side, too. Oh, bully for him. <laughs> Jimmy Tonic. Yeah, why not? Good evening, Betty. Hello, lovely. What's he doing out there? Oh, too tired to notice, love. Fine, I think. <laughs> I rather think our newlyweds have struck another bad patch. Oh, must be catching. Just walked out of the corner shop, Reenie and Alpha having a ding dong. Ah, oh, well, they must have made us up. Deirdre tells them to come out celebrating something or other. Ah, uh, not rowing, perhaps. Hey, uh, he is all right, isn't he? I mean, I mean, after the accident. The one in here? Yeah, I mean, he is fully recovered. I mean, he does look a bit wild at times, you know. Who wouldn't be married to Reenie? <laughs> Did you see that woman next to me? Dripping in gold she was. Which one? That one that was sitting next to that little fella, you know, with the, that funny laugh. Do you know she had a charm bracelet on worth about two thousand pounds if it were worth a penny? No, I never noticed. Do you think you go around your eyes shut? <laughs> hey, do you want to drive? Can I? Do you want to, or don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Hey, I'll bring you here again. <laughs> You're a crafty devil, aren't you? There's me thinking that you've seen the light and the only reason why you want me to drive is because you think you've had far too much to drink. Now, come on, be honest. Look, drive the car and concentrate on the job in hand. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Walker. What a help us? Oh, no, no, everybody's happy. No, it's, um, oh, well, I can't help thinking about those children. You know, the ones I told you about. Well, have you decided to tell them, SPCC? Well, I mean, it's like Ken Barlow says it's best they should know before something worse happens, you see. That's what you say, though, that's bad enough now. They're still being left, are they, the children? They're roaming the streets all hours. There's neglect, you know, and in its own way, it's just as bad as cruelty. Well, I mean, that's what's worrying me. I mean, every time I go out of my house, there they are. I mean, anything could happen to them, but what can you do? I mean, you can't interfere. 
It's a very thin line, you know, between interfering and doing one's civic duty. Now, I know what you're thinking, and of course you're right. You can't take the law into your own hands, but you can put the responsibility onto the proper authorities. Now, Elizabeth, dear, there is the telephone. I shall be in the bar, and don't worry, you're doing the right thing. Uh, you see, I told you we were right knocking. Just leave them alone, they are allowed. Yeah, uh, we're married, you know, we're having the worst. <laughs> oh, we do know you're married, you know, but it's time you stop them silly games. What, just because you did? Very funny. Hey, what are you watching? Well, uh, it's supposed to be a comedy, but uh, it's got now on you two. You're right, it hasn't. Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, no, not just a moment, love. We'll, we'll wait till supper. Well, then? Well, then what? Ask us where we've been. <laughs> what do I know where you've been? Peterloo Place. Oh. You see, we can knock spots off you as women. You don't mind, do you? Look? No, of course not. Well, we told them what we were in the Larry's ever look round, aren't they a lovely couple? Yeah, and it's as sound as a bell and all that house, I'll tell you this much, for nothing. You do a bit of hard work on that, you've got a little palace there. Well then, we'd better make them an offer. You won't regret it, love, I tell you. It'll be great for Super Kid. Yeah, hey, and there's that part round the corner with the swings. <laughs> it's not even born yet. <laughs> it's nice and handy, that's what I like about it. Oh, and I mean... You'll not be leaving your friends, will you? Right, come on then. Get your coats on. I'll tell you what. I'll buy you a drink at the Rovers. They're having their knees up down there. We're definitely on the wrong road. Don't blame me. Was you the subtitle? I know. Well, nobody's blaming anybody. Oh, there's a lay-by up ahead. In. Let's see how you can stop. How did I do? Hey? Oh, fine, fine. Hey, what do you say on that last uh, signpost? Uh, left mark, yeah. Barpool, right Wimslow. Uh, you told me to turn left. Yeah, we should have gone right. Oh, heck, I don't have to turn round, do I? No, no, no. No, we, we can turn right up here, right again, we're back on the same road. Hey, it's nice round here, isn't it? I'd rather have grain. We'll only be a cock stride from Lakes, you know. We'll be having our evening drink at Windermere. Oh, do you know, I still can't believe it. Ah, well, don't till you get Bannister's money in your pocket. But you don't think they'll let us down, do you? What, if they run around, they've given us? No, nah, I don't think they'll let us down. It'll be a different life, you know. No more rat race. Hey, you should hear Jack Orsley going on about it. He lived all his life in Weatherfield, then he moved up here with his wife, retired to a little village outside Kendall. You should hear him talking about it. According to him, people talk to each other in the shops. <laughs> we talk in our shop? No, we pull people to pieces in our shop, love. You can't do that if somebody wants something fast. But they're not in a rush in the country, you see. They all take the time. It's living in a nice place, what does it? Yeah, well, stands to reason, doesn't it? Right. Might even change you. You never know your luck. Come on, let's get going. As long as Take it easy, for goodness sake. Go on, clear. Nice and steady, because you might see meet somebody coming up the other way. See. Hey, up there's some roadworks here. 
Start slowing down just in case. Ah, there's traffic lights, wait. Oh, there would be. Keep keep the engine running, love. Keep the engine running. Right, that's it. Stay in gear. Uh, ah, they're changing now. Stay in gear. And off you go, the green now. Go on. Keep your speed up. Keep your speed up. Keep your speed up. Oh, I told you to keep your speed up. And you can't do five miles an hour in top. I know, I know. Oh, put it in you. Put it in you. Give us the key. What do you think you're doing? Come on. Change you over. I can do it. Come on. then hmm? now don't you go getting yourself dirty you just sit here and read your book while mummy gets auntie emily ready there you are there's your book oh there you are oh doesn't she look lovely <laughs> she wants to get married now don't you you want to marry uncle arnold <laughs> now don't start i was only being funny hey if you've got any ideas about saying no i won't instead of yes i will you can forget them no no if i have a worry at the moment deirdre it's my hair oh, come on then hey no crayons you you know i should never have got her ready this early elizabeth did you want me love what do you think very nice now don't say very nice i want constructive criticism now, do you think that this is too formal? Now, I never said that, Mrs Walker. I just said that you look the dead spit of Margaret Thatcher. I know exactly what you said. And in normal circumstances, I would take that as a great compliment. Had I been opening a debate in the house or touring a steelworks... I wasn't having a go at you, Mrs Walker. As my employee, I sincerely hope not. But you have sown a seed of doubt. Now, Elizabeth... Would Mrs. Thatcher wear this to a wedding? Now, truthfully, well, yes, to a, to a register office do she exactly. would. Exactly. Exactly. That was precisely my thought. Mm. Now, had it been held at church with all the attendant ritual, had it been in a flower-decked marquee with smoked salmon and photographers from Lancashire Life, well, of course, that would have been quite different. But as it is, <laughs> you do agree? Yes, yes, I do, yes. <laughs> Good. You know, I really must rely on my own instincts in future because they're invariably right. Thank you, Bet. Thank you, Mrs Walker. Really, it's quite sad, you know, this constant desire of the uneducated to score off their intellectual superiors. <laughs> and they always get the worst of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mrs Walker. You know, I'll swing for her one of these days. God help me, I will, I'll swing for her. She gets me in there. Bet, dear, tell me honestly, absolutely honestly, what do you think of my outfit? So I tell her. Well, you're asking for it, aren't you? Well, I didn't say out nasty. I just told her what I thought. Well, more or less, by it, you should have heard her. Well, at least folk are talking to you. Eh? I said at least folk are talking to you. That's so much. What's up with you? Oh, never mind me and my petty little worries. You've just been told off by Madam Walker. Happens to me every flipping day in my life. It's now to pound, isn't that? 
Do you know, I thought I'd miss your singing. Come on, what's the matter? Only lost me job, crossed the road. What for? What I did with that football coupon. Oh, give over, pull the other one. Mike Baldwin would never give you the sack for that. He might be a swine, but he's a swine with a sense of humour. Oh, maybe he is, but them that work for him aren't. They threatened to walk out if he didn't give me the push. And they've sent me to Coventry. Not that that worries me. I mean, it's hardly uplifting conversation talking to that lot. They made him give you the sack? Yeah, so he did, didn't he? Well, he would, wouldn't he? I'm nothing, me. And you're just taking it? What else can I do? I've just told you I'm nothing. Got no union to back me up. What am I? A ten a penny cleaner. <laughs> and it's not as if I'd took out off them. I mean, they'd won out. But you kidded them, Hilda. You kidded them that they'd won 100,000. Yeah, well, it were only a joke. Would you have laughed if they'd have played it on you? By heck, you don't half land yourself in some flaming messes. I wouldn't care if folk around here treated me like somewhat normal. I've not even been invited to this wedding. Ah, well, you're not on your own there, cos I'm not going either. Ah, well, you don't live in the street. Me and Stan do. Tilsley's aren't going. Well, why should they? They haven't been here five minutes. I'm a long-standing resident, me. Long-suffering and all. Well, never mind. You've got Stan. That the best you can do? Now, what did I tell you? No crayons, I said, didn't I? Is it coming off? Yes, I think so. It's not those greasy ones, thank goodness. Oh, heck, it can't be them. Oh, I sincerely hope not. Well, how are you getting it? Oh, it is, you know. How are you early? Come on in. She's not up yet. There's a fella here says he's the bridegroom. I told you we were too early. Might just as well have talked to the wall. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, sit down. Uh, Did Now, could look, we get... just leave us alone. Get yourselves ready. We're perfectly happy as we are. Yes, well, blame me, blame me. I thought perhaps we'd better not be late after... Um... Oh, I didn't disgrace myself, did I? Do you mean before or after you fell over? <laughs> no, I know that didn't happen. Well, of course, you didn't disgrace yourself. Only it's quite foreign to my nature, you know. Moderation in all things. It's the family motto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they all say that, you know. All the well-known drunks. <laughs> Tracy, will you stay here, love? Look after your Auntie Flora, your Uncle Arnold, and your Uncle um, George, isn't it? George, William, Frederick, if you want the lot, what George will do. Oh. Is this the bridesmaid, then? So she says, no show without punch is a chuck. By gum, me looks in. <laughs> Can we have a dance after yeah. your Auntie Emily gets married? Can we have a dance? <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, come on, you. There's a wedding on. <laughs> well, lift your flaming feet up, then. Hey, don't take it out on me. It's not our fault. Well, I can't abide muck on the machine, me, when I'm working. I'm a tidy person, me, by nature. Hey, it's not our fault, you know, that Hilda's not working, is it, Ida? Of course it is. It was us that got it sack, weren't it? Yeah, well, I didn't mean that. I meant it's as much her fault as it is ours. Oh, why? Well, it should have got somebody else in then, shouldn't it? Oh, give him a chance, Vera. He only gave Hilda a card yesterday. Well, this is my job, I know that. I don't get paid for this, you know. I said I don't get paid me for sweeping flaming floors. Well, I'm only saying. I know you're only saying something, Vera. You're forever only saying something. Yesterday is, why don't you get rid of Hilda? Now you're beefing because she's not here. You're driving me around a flaming twist, you lot. Look, we have got a right to his opinions, you All right, well, she's over there now. Now, what do you want me to do? Go and get her and bring her back. Is that what you want? Eh? No, not me, it is. No. No, me <laughs> neither. If she shows her face in here, I'll stick to her to that flaming wall. Well, I where will. you go, then? Oh, come on, Mr Baldwin. We've a right to feel a bit umpty after what's happened. You'd feel the same if you'd lost a packet. But you haven't lost a packet because you never won anything in the first place. But we thought we had. All right, you thought you had. And who was it who gave you those two marvellous days when you thought you were millionaires, eh? Hilda. You shouldn't be getting another sack. You should be over there offering your hand in friendship. Oh. I'll offer her both hands when I catch her, round her flaming neck. Oh, hello, Hilda. I'm just uh, closing, love. Oh, well, I'll not keep you. You're out. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting ready to go to the wedding. Oh, going to the ceremony, are you? No, I'm getting chased to go to the reception. Oh, such as it is. Yeah, well, such as it is. I don't think they want anybody at the... Uh... At the ceremony, you know, just relatives and close relatives. Yeah, I did hear they was keeping it small. Mm. Any road, it'll do you good to get out a bit, so I'll not keep you. Just give us a couple of tins of that uh, spaghetti bolly, uh, you know, the one with the minced beef. Bolognese, aren't yeah. they? Hey, is it right you're not working over there anymore? Oh, don't mention it. A bit naughty of them, isn't it? Mind you... All right, you needn't bother. I know what I did. At least I did own up. They didn't have to drag it out of me. This is the way they treat you. 
Oh, blimey, turn that sign round, will you, love? I'm never going to get away. Can I have your pancakes, please? Oh, I forget about them. Morning. How much is that? Yeah, uh, 72 altogether. I said morning. I think that's right. By the heck, you wouldn't credit it, would you? They not only chuck me out of my job and send me to Coventry and all, they get bits of kids like this here to do their dirty work for them. What did they say to you? Speak to her and you'll get your cards and all, is that what they said? <laughs> oh, these are your so-called pals, you know. This is your working class, what we're all in. By the heck, you wouldn't think so. That's right, love. Wasn't my idea. Look, it's not a nice thing you're doing, you know, sending people to Coventry. I have to do what the rest of them do. Ah, you do, don't you? Listen, blow him. It's his dinner hour. Give us three bottles, love. How do. Aren't you talking to him, either? Hmm. Why should we? No, it'd be better for you and all if you didn't talk to him, that trollop of a wife of his. What's he got to do with me? Well, you're on our side, aren't you? By heck, you'd better be. Cos we don't have to booze in here, you know. You are? I said we don't have to booze in here. Who do you think you are? The flaming mafia? You do your boozing where you like, sweetheart. I couldn't care less. Don't come in here chucking your threats about. I don't work over there, thank God, and if I did, you wouldn't catch me playing them daft games. They are not daft games. It's standard union practice, isn't it, Ivy? Sure about it, Hi, girl. Excuse me. Hey! Hey! What do you think you're doing? I'm having a game of darts. Well, stop your darts and get yourself home and washed and changed. Have you seen time? <laughs> Look, you've got it all wrong. It's not us that takes three days to get ready, you know. I'll have you know I'm ready. Oh, are you? Mm. All right, then, have a drink. But I don't want a drink. I want you washed and changed. We have to be at Emily's for half past one. It's only half past flaming twelve. That's half an hour to get ready and half an hour to have me dinner. What dinner? Me dinner, me dinner, dinner. You're getting no dinner. You're going to a reception. You've been sandwiches. Do you know you think I never fed him? Just look at that. That's all muscle, huh? Eh? You could fry chips in that muscle. Hey, that's a good idea. Fry me some chips. Come on, get home. Come Rita, on. Rita, what time what? are they leaving here? They're on the way, and the best man's out on the street. Sure. Betty, look after Bar for me, will you? We'll have a shifty at Bride, seeing as I won't be seeing her later like some. Oh, fun. go on then. We're not talking to these three. Right, charming. Any more from the Skylark? Hey, is my old fella in there? Well, where else? Your mates are in and all. Oh, are they? Well, I hope they choke themselves. Well, look, you take Flora, I'll take Deirdre and Trace. Right. Oh, okay. oh thank you, love. Flora. Thank you. Is anybody taking me? Oh, I think I might manage you. Have a very happy day. Oh, thank you, Hilda. You look lovely. Thank you. All right? Yes. Bring back memories, does it? <laughs> Mrs. Walker, your taxi's here. I don't know why I gave Fred the day off. He could have taken us in the sort of yeah. Oh, you do look nice, Mrs. Walker. Thank, thank you, dear. Come on. Yeah. We're done already. I thought we were going to Jackson's. Oh, I've got time. Uh, a light bottle for the missus. Why are they looking daggers at me? Oh, ignore them. Well, it's not my fault. It's you that was daft. Not you. Stanley, you're my husband. What's that got to do with it? By I can so think there's folks still getting married. And your full names are Emily Bishop and Arnold Henry Swain. Yes. That's right. Uh, widow? Yes. And widow. Yes. And your present address? Three And that's it, thank you very much. and guests come in now, please. Uh, would the witnesses sit behind 
summon the bride and groom, please. Mr. Cartwright. Good afternoon. Oh, please be seated. Friends, we are come here today in this room, which has been duly sanctioned by law for the celebration of marriages, to witness the joining together in matrimony of Emily Bishop and Arnold Henry Swain. Hello. Mm. Hello. All by yourself? Yeah, I like being on my own. Oh, well, I'll leave you to it then. I didn't mean you. I left it round here somewhere. Ah. Forgot me movable spanner. Oh. Do you want half a pound cake? Oh, sure. Oh. The cheese. Cheese is better than nothing, isn't it? Yeah. Is there a ring? Uh. Yes, if you would place it on the cushion, please. Now, if you will take the ring and place it on the bride's left hand and hold it there. Now, repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Arnold Henry Swain. Uh, to witness that I, Arnold Henry Swain. Do take thee, Emily Bishop. To take thee, Emily Bishop. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Now you, Emily, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Emily Bishop. To witness that I, Emily Bishop. Do take thee, Arnold Henry Swain. To take thee, Arnold Henry Swain. To be my lawful wedded husband. Be my lawful wedded husband. Arnold and Emily, having consented to be joined together and having witnessed the same before the persons here present, and having symbolized your marriage by the joining of hands and the receiving of a ring, I declare that you are now husband and wife together. So, uh, you haven't got a regular boyfriend then? No, I've got boys to go out with, but not a regular one. No, me neither. I don't think you should go steady till you're about till you're older. Yeah, it's a mistake, isn't it? Yeah. My friend Carol, she went out with this boy since she was fourteen. Then he had to go to Australia with his mum and dad. She were heartbroken. She said she'd never go out with another boy again. But she will, though. I know. Do you, uh, do you go dancing? Yeah. I go to St Martin's. It's our church. We have a very good band on Friday night. Oh, I wouldn't mind going there. Why don't you come next week? There's a crowd of us going. OK. I've got one of these. Oh, tough. I'm sorry I thought it was you who did the awful thing with the pool's coupon. No, oh, forget it. Well... It's just that when you get to know people better, well, you know what I mean. Right then. Do you want your fish and chips at home or at Jackson's? At home. Oh, so as you can make butties, eh? I never knew anybody like you for butties. I don't get many pleasures. You get a jolly sight more than I do, and that's a fact. Now then, ten minutes and then home. To be a queue. Half an hour, eh? Oh, you do cheer me up. Well, I will be. Well, come and keep us company then. You're bound to find somebody to talk to in queue. Oh, I. Oh, well, Mrs. <coughs> Hello, the married then. Well and truly, <coughs> how are things? Oh, not so bad. No, I'm not saying, dear. I've got to go back to Emily. I just thought I would see how things were. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd come to give us a hand. <laughs> no, I'm expected. You do make me feel guilty. <laughs> right, you. Make me laugh. Hey. They are after they've got what they want. They don't want. Oh, say when? How about tonight? What do they spray these offices, these registry offices, with? Because whatever it is, it keeps them fresh. Who needs spraying, eh? 
you know he started at me the minute I came in here? Oh, don't shatter me illusions. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> hey, darling, darling, uh, when you get a minute, have a shove to your Arnold's suit. And they call us women. I'm not joking. You have a look at it. It must have cost him 150 quid if it cost him a penny. I heard somebody say that. Well, that pet shop's only a hobby, you know. Yeah, and she's worth about a couple of thousand. What are they stopping around here for? Well, it won't be long before they're off. Not according to Deirdre, anyway. I'll tell you, I don't blame her. If I had the bread, I'd be off like a shot. Hey, Furcliffe, are you listening to me? Is this a trace of your sleep, then? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. Not for a minute. She's usually very good when I put her down, oh. you know. She reads a lot. Really? Pictures. Oh. Have you made any plans, then, about where to live? Oh, I'm moving in with Alf above the corner shop, didn't you know? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, good. I thought perhaps I'd have to move out from over our place, but Alf has been very good. I thought I'd move me bits and pieces while they're on their honeymoon, you know. You know, I may be a sister, but he hasn't told me where they're going. Oh, very nice. Well, now, let's get it straight. I read the telegrams and then I introduce you. Uh, yes, that's right. Then I say a few words and Len proposes the toast. No, oh, haven't you got that the wrong way around? Well, what does it matter so long as we're all enjoying ourselves? Of course, it'll matter, really. Oh, there, there. What do you remember about your wedding, Stanley? <laughs> Forget it, she's here. I don't suppose it occurred to you to go home and cut some bread and butter. What are you doing here? You thought I was at home. I didn't think you'd be at home for a minute. What are you? Oh, shut up and drink your beer. Have they set out? Not to me, no. Damn things. Oh, forget them, right? You told me to. Oh, well, maybe you can, but I can't. I've just phoned our Trevor. Hey? From that uh, box outside Jackson's. They've mended it. What do you phone him for? Well, I'm going there for a few days. He says I can. I can't stand any more of this lot, Stanley. So you'll just have to look after yourself for a day or two. It'll do you no harm. I always look after myself. Oh, as if I didn't know. Now, come on, you'll have these stone cold. Oh, hello. I'm glad I bumped into you. I've uh, got your wages here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mr Baldwin. I was coming over. Well, I'll save you the trouble. And I haven't made a mistake. There's a few extra quid there, seeing as it's your last week's wages. Oh, very good of you. No, I'm just sorry it had to happen, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> oh, all right. Come on. You're a tiger. Aren't I just? Large scotch, or are you cutting down like the rest of us have to? The day I can't afford large scotch, darling, we are in big, big trouble. <laughs> How's your love life then? Fine, thank you. How's yours? Oh, not so good. Do you want one? I'm sorry to hear that. Word's got round, has it? Oh, no, when that happens, they come flocking. I'm just hitting a bad streak, you know, hitting a few losers. I'll say one thing for you, though. Whatever your faults, you do have a bit of life in you. How very kind. If I need a reference, I know where to come. Any time. And in the meantime, what about a night out, eh? I'll let you know when I've got one free. I thought you'd be at this wedding. <laughs> Not my scene. Stop making a pig of yourself. I'm hungry. <laughs> All the best from 15 Inkerman Street. Oh, 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 oh. Now, there's just two more then, gentlemen, and then I'll shut up for five minutes. Oh, that'll be a change, won't it? <laughs> Every happiness in your own kitchen, Jim Sedgwick. Oh, he owns the cafe where Emily used to Tell them where the cobbler earns his coppers. All the best for your future happiness, Leonard Swindley. Swindley? Oh, I wonder how he knew. Hey, there's any more of them meat pies anywhere? Listen, you stay where you are. I'll go look. You've been seven times already. <laughs> Oh. oh, I am glad you could yeah. come, Len. <laughs> oh, darling, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. You've got a smashing fella there, you know. I have. I've been uh, very lucky. Quite a lot of women don't even get one. Like Rita, for instance? Oh, get away with you. <laughs> it's me again, folks. Could I just have your attention just for a couple of minutes? This never stops talking, does he? It's part of me charm, oh, love. No. no, I'd just like to say, uh, uh, you know, what a wonderful time I've had. I don't know about the bride and groom, but I've had a smashing time. Oh. And it's been a great privilege to meet you all. Oh. And I'd like to call on my dear friend Arnold to say a few words. Oh. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Friends. Romans and country. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. You could have been in for a long speech. I was renowned for them. But now I'm very pleased to say that I've got a wife to do the talking for. Me. Oh, I say. Uh, but just one thing. I was brought up in a God-fearing family. And I was made aware at a very early age of the seven deadly sins. Pride 
they told me, was one of the worst. Well, today, I suppose I'm feeling something of a sinner because I'm a very, very proud man. Oh, oh, right. nice, oh. Don't you wish some bloke had said oh, things like that to you? Day. What do you mean, don't I wish? They have. And like a mug, I believed them. Oh, Come on, let's raise our glasses. Let's offer a toast to our happy couple, eh? Emily and Arnold. Emily, Emily and Arnold. Arnold. Bless you, All the best. Bless you. Good luck. Where do you think you're sneaking off to? Just going to work. Oh, no, you're not. I want a word with you. Gran, I'll be late. Ah, hard luck. In there you go. Look, Len said I I'm not to be late this morning because we've got an early start on. You are not going anywhere until we've got a few things straightened out about last night. Oh, Gran, you told me off last night. If you consider that a telling off, you've got another thing coming. I can tell you that I was much too concerned about Karen and the state she was in. How old is she? 16? Yeah. 16. You ought to be flaming proud of yourself for getting a drunk. Only cider. Only cider. He gets you drunk, I'll tell you that much. And it wasn't only the cider, was it? You had to got my gin as well. You gave her some of that. Just the one. That's what you say. He gets you drunk and she's too young to be drinking. And so are you, for that matter. You've got a lot to learn about booze, my friend. And the first one is, it's not pop. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't treating it like... And the second lesson is, don't you dare pinch my gin. Oh. You wouldn't have minded if I made her a cup of tea, would you? Why is it pinching just because I give her some gin? Don't you argue with me. I'm telling you, you stay away from that stuff. And anything to do with alcohol. Where do you get in the first place? The corner shop. The corner shop? They want shooting for giving it to you. They know you're underage. Wait till I get a chance to talk oh, to you. Oh, look, I'm fed up all this carrying on. We was only having a bit of fun. A bit of fun? A bit of fun? If you need to get drunk to have a bit of fun at your age, Martin, God help you, that's all I can say. Look, you like Karen, don't you? Yeah, of course I Yes, do. well, I'll be very surprised if she likes you this morning, after the way she'll be feeling, especially if her mother's given her a pasting. I'll be very surprised if she even speaks to you. Oh, they didn't break the lock, then? Did no need, have they? Not when they had my handbag with key in it. Oh. Oh, they've had a right picnic, haven't they? Oh, they want shooting. I hate them. I hate them all. All criminals. Oh, and the ones that are... I hate the worst of all of those that take off folks that haven't got much in the first place. They've been into everything. That's why I couldn't sleep here last night. I just couldn't. Oh, I understand, love. I was glad to have you. You can stay as long as you like. They even took me her piece. Look, I tell you what, you'll have to make out, you know, a little list of everything that's gone. Yeah, the police said. Well, you never know. You might get them back. I doubt it, Betty. They don't hold out much hope. They've taken practically everything I had. Oh. My telly, my radio, my bits of jewellery. God knows they weren't worth that much, only to me. I'll make us a cup of tea. You can't, Betty. They took kettle. You know, they even took blanket and bedspread off bed to wrap all the stuff in. Oh, dear. Oh, Betty. They even took that photo of Martin. It was the only one I had. Oh, oh. oh no, lovey, come on. They could have had the frame. But why couldn't they leave me with photo? Oh, I don't know, love. Now, what else do I need? Let me see. Uh... Oh, yes, a wholemeal loaf. Wholemeal, eh? Mr. Tatlock usually has sliced white. Yeah, well, when Uncle Albert does the shopping, we have white. When I do the shopping, we have wholemeal or brown. Well, I've heard of worse arrangements. Right, is there anything else? Uh, let's see now. Now, I seem to remember you like pickled red cabbage. We've got a new brand in it. It's ever so tasty. Oh, go on, then. I'll try it. 
Oh, Tracy certainly seems to have made herself at home around these parts, isn't she? What? Talk about ducks taking to water. I'll tell you something else as well. She's getting so she understands money. Really? Really. She knows the difference between a milk bottle top and a ten pence piece, I can mm. tell you. Well, in this world, that can't be bad. Mm. Right, how much is this little lot there? Hang on, I'll just reckon you up. One o'clock, Deirdre. Might as well get your dinner. Fill up, Ken. Hello. OK, Ken, that's uh, three pounds twelve p, please. Three, twelve. There we are. Thank you. And, uh, twelve p. So. Right, I'll feed Madam then. Can I get you anything? No, oh, don't make up for me, love. You sure? It's not trouble. No, no, I'll walk down to the Rovers and have a pie later on. Get me out for half an hour. Okay. Come on then, madam. Let's go and feed our faces. Oh, heck, we might as well wash our faces while we're at it as well. <laughs> How do you get that mucky? <laughs> Oh, how do you like your new assistant? Oh, she's very good. I see she sold you some red cabbage. Do you know, she shifted a lot of this stuff since I told her I couldn't get shut of it. Tarkov. They've taken practically everything she's got, you know. I tell me, all the bits and pieces, all the clothes, even, except them she's standing up. Well, what about the neighbours? Didn't they notice anything? Well, the police will be asking round, of course, but according to last night, there's nothing remotely suspicious. Well, that's the trouble with flats and bed sitters, isn't it? You're all behind closed doors. And, I mean, if you do meet somebody on the stairs you don't know them from Adam, might be a burglar, might be just somebody new moving in. It just goes to show, doesn't it, there's something to be said for living in a street like this. I mean, you might have nosy neighbours, but they're better than the guard dog, aren't they? You know, you never miss a chance, do you, Fertler? You know, in fact, you know what I fancy living in a little house with a garden, and every chance he gets, he sticks in a commercial for staying put. All that I'm saying is it's a good job we live in a street like this because there's less chance of burglars. You've got to be kidding. We've got burglars who live here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but he's retired, haven't he? Yeah, gives a pipe, Beth. <coughs> How are you feeling today? Miserable. Yeah, well, you will be. Look, here, have a drink with me. It'll do you good. If you mean it, I won't mind a brandy. Hey? I'm not asking you to pay, Eddie. I'll stand it myself. I'll get Mrs Walker to knock it off me way. No, no, go on, have one. I did offer, didn't I? And I made in a few bob, now I'm on the bins. I hope so. Well, cheers. Whatever that means. Look, uh, look at it this way. Whatever happens now, it's got to get better, right? Do you know, I knew a fella in the neck, and he said something to me that I have never, ever forgotten. Eddie, he said, Eddie, when you were on the floor, the only place you can go is up. Great fella he was. Drop dead just like that. So I heard. Look, it's always darkest before the dawn. Now, I know you've had a lot of stuff nicked, and I'll be scouring the bins for you. Eh? Well, you'd be surprised what people chuck away. I can get you all sorts, you know. And I'm not talking about rubbish, neither. Eddie, I've lost things I can never replace. Personal things. Things I really cherished. I wouldn't care, but whoever took them won't get hardly out for them. I suppose not, really. But to me, they were priceless. That is the worst crime of all, I think. You know, there are mementos of Jack that I just couldn't bear to lose. No insurance could replace them. Not that I had any mind your insurance. Oh, bad. I know, I know. I suppose there's no use saying you should have had. No use at all. We've made excellent time. Yes. Well, like I said, coming off the motorway later does add miles on the clock, but it saves the minutes. Yes. Aye, aye. Welcome back, the newlyweds. Oh, thank you. Nice to see you, Mrs. Swain. And you, Chief. Hello. Isla White, wasn't it? Now, uh, tell me, would you recommend it for the honeymoon then? Oh, it was very nice. Quiet where we were. Very beautiful. We are, Chief. I'll take these for uh, you. No, no, I can manage. I oh, can. no, you need your hands free. The age-old ritual. You know, manly bridegroom carries his bride across the threshold. Oh, I don't think that's really appropriate. No, Emily, the man's right. Stand aside. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't tackle the stairs if I were you, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right, Arnold? <laughs> Arnold? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Well, you mustn't overdo things. Yes, well, I wasn't going to have that yobbo saying I was past it. 
you know, you trotted in here like a good one. Shall I take these upstairs? You don't want to do any more lifting for a bit, do you? Uh, no, no, they'll be fine there. Uh, thanks all the same. Now, if you'll uh, just excuse us. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Well, you don't have to draw a picture. Please, a crowd, eh? <laughs> See ya. Talk about thick-skinned. Oh, it's good to be home. Of course, it was a wonderful holiday. It was, wasn't it? But it's always nice to get back home. You know, Emily, home is wherever you and I are now. <laughs> well, what I mean is, home doesn't have to be here. I mean, you're not madly attached to this place, are you? Well, it's been my home for quite a long time now, Arnold. I'm happy here. Yes, of course you are. But you could be even happier, you know. A little cottage, perhaps. And if you didn't want to go too far out into the country, I mean, at least somewhere with a garden. A garden would be lovely. Yes. Well, we'll, uh, we'll start looking around now. There's no mad rush. We'll take our time. And then when we find the right house, we'll sell this place. Yes. I shall miss it, though. Well, there are a lot of things that you won't miss, though, aren't there? I mean, some of the neighbours, for instance. Like me Lado does now. There you are, my love. Thanks, love. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I, uh, see the newlyweds are back. Or at least Arnold's car's outside. Oh. I have to pop round and see Emily later on. Yes, I would, while you've got the chance. Hey, what do you mean? Well, I doubt he'll be stopping around here for much longer. Mm. I mean, he'll want to move to somewhere more salubrious. He'll want to take her away from all this, won't he? I hope it's what she wants, then. That's it, then. Thanks, love. I tell him. Listen, will you come round to my place and put a new lock on for me? It's a bit like shutting the stable door, isn't it? I know, but I've got to get it done. And uh, I won't be able to pay you for a week or two, if you don't mind. Oh, give over. I'll do it for now. When? This afternoon, all right. Thanks. You know, this burglary is really not you sideways, aren't it, Ben? I mean, I've never known you not bothered to put makeup on before. It's not that I've not bothered. They took it, didn't they? I'd some in my handbag, right, but the rest was in a little vanity case in my flat, and that went with everything else. I'd have thought they'd have needed a furniture van to shift all your makeup. Hey, I'm only kidding. <laughs> not in mood, I ain't. Listen, I bought a couple of new lipsticks last week. <coughs> I haven't used either of them. Have one. Let's have a look. Oh, this summer looks summer like my colour. Well, have it. You're not too proud. I'm not too proud, but are you sure? Yeah. That colour were a mistake for me, anyway. And listen, Fairclough, none of that's got to end up on your collar. Do you know I'm going to have to replace everything? God knows how long it's going to take me, because they've taken nearly all my clothes. I've got what I'm standing up in, and luckily I had a dress and coat at cleaners, but that's it. I've been thinking about your wardrobe, Ben. I'll not be dazzling your drinkers for a bit, Mrs Walker, not till I can save up and get some new gear. Well, no woman likes wearing the same clothes day after day, and I think I can help you. You've already given me one sub on my wages, Mrs Walker. I'm not talking about money, dear. Now, as you know, I have a great many clothes, more than I can wear, really, and I'd be glad to give you some in the circumstances. Your clothes, Mrs Walker? Yes, dear. Oh, no. No, I couldn't. It wouldn't seem right not to take your clothes. It's the least I can do. Now, we are approximately the same size. You will be getting style, good quality, high fashion. You'll be better dressed than you've ever been before. I've got to sort them out. That's it. Now I'm stuck with Annie Walker's cast-offs. Then get some more drinks in. This is something I have got to see. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hang on a minute. 
doing this morning? You were a bit rough last night. Mm, I was awful first thing this morning. Hangover, I suppose. Never had one before. And I don't suppose you want one again, either. Oh, it was really bad. I couldn't face any breakfast. Just about money some lunch. Ah, well, you're back in the land of the living again. Just about. I'm glad I saw you. I wanted a word with you. I uh, don't blame you for what happened last night. I know it was our Martin's fault. I gave him a right rocket this morning. Oh, I didn't have that much, really. It's just that I'm not used to it. Yes, well, our Martin should have known better. I told him so. My dad gave me a right telling off. And you have been drinking right away. Mm, carried on terrible. Better tell Martin to keep out of his way for a couple of days then, hadn't I? He was really angry. He said, he said I haven't got to see Martin anymore. Oh, fathers say things like that when they're angry. He meant it. He said it again this morning. He said Martin's a bad influence. I haven't got to have anything to do with him. A bit on the strict side, is he? Oh, is he? Well, I can understand his point of view, of course, but I think that's a bit Victorian. I mean, he's as if oh, Martin's a bad lad. He's not. He's just daft, that's all. That's what my dad said. And I can't argue with him. I oh, might not be choked. He likes you a lot. Better go, I'll be late for work. Bye. No, honestly. Have you ever seen Mrs. Walker in a frock you like? Well, to be honest, only the once. She had a frock on the other night. I thought it'd make a smashing pair of curtains. Oh, no, not fair, do you? She's got some nice stuff, has Mrs. Walker. Don't you think so, Len? What the hell are you asking me for? What do I know about female clothes? Now, that's true. I know how to unzip them. Trust you to lower the tone of the conversation. Ah, oh, no, she doesn't buy rubbish, though, does she? Only the best quality for Mrs. Walker. Hi up. <clears throat> Sorry I took so long. I am sorry I would suit you. Now, dear, try that. Well, I doubt if anything's going to fit me, Mrs. Walker. You see, I'm a lot taller than you. I know, but you wear your skirt so much shorter, so that should fit in nice. Now, do try it. <clears throat> oh, it's a nice dress. It is, isn't it? Yes. Well, I don't know. It has a touch of the empire line, that. Just a touch, yes. I'll bet when you bought that, we had an empire, didn't we? <laughs> I'm not saying that it is a recent purchase, but with quality, that hardly matters. Oh, what's this, then? Somebody planning a fancy dress party? I'm trying to find some clothes for Bet, who has lost most of hers. Oh, uh, I see. Well, I'm not sure it's exactly me, Mrs Walker. Right, dear. Well, now, try that one. Now, I must be perfectly frank. When I bought that, I don't think I was feeling very well. And quite honestly, I've never worn it. But I think it would suit you very nicely, dear. Tea up. Oh, great. So, Emily, what are you doing? Yeah. All oh, right, I'll take it round later when it's ready. I want a chance to say hello. Ah, oh, right. Hello, love. Which one of you two sold our Martin bottles of cider yesterday? Cider? Yes, cider. No, I did, Elsie. Why? Was there something wrong with it? It's usually all right, that's still... Well, did he get a bad bottle? There's nothing wrong with it, as far as I know, except that it made our Martin's girlfriend drunk. Oh, I see. I don't think you do. Martin's 17, she's 16. You've no right to sell alcohol to kids under age, have you? It was only cider. It's alcohol. And you've no right to sell it to kids, you know, Martin's under age. Hang on, Elsie. He said it was for you. For me? I don't drink cider. Well, that's not the point, is it? No, but the point is it's alcohol. You've no right to let him have it, him or any other underage kid. Look, let, let's be right about this, Elsie. If Martin comes in, in here and he says he wants some drink and it's for you, what's dear is supposed to do? Tell him to get lost. You'll be round here screaming blue murder. Yeah, he's been in here one or two times for drink for you, Elsie. He was in here only last week for a bottle of gin. That was for you, I hope. Yeah, that was for me. Yeah, well, let's be fair about it. I mean, I don't think you should be telling dear Geoff. It's Martin that should be getting it for telling lies. Oh, don't worry. I've already read Martin the riot act. I'm sorry for snapping at you, Deirdre. I didn't mean it, but... If he comes in again, don't give him anything. Not of that kind, anyway. Even if he says it's for me and my tongue's hanging out, right? OK. OK. Hello. Oh, I thought we were in for a right old row then. Is that the first bit of aggro you've had in here? Mm. <laughs> you get worse than that, believe me. I've made you a cup of tea, Len, but I've no kettle. Ah, it's all right. It's a good one, is it, this new lot? They're all good, love. Until you leave your handbag lying around with a key in it. Don't rub it in. I'll be careful from now on. And don't tell me it's too late, cos I know. Yahoo! Mavis! Oh. Are you the others looking after the cabin? Well, Rita said it was all right for me to pop around, seeing it was a mission of mercy. Come on in, Cock. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Rita told me that they'd taken practically everything back, so... I just wondered if you'd any use for a kettle. I was just talking about a kettle. I just said to Len I couldn't make him a brew. Oh, good. Well, you can have this one, cos I've got another one more modern. Uh, well, I mean, this is perfectly all right. It's just that it doesn't knock itself off when it boils, so you have to watch in case it boils away. Maybe you're a little belter. I don't know what to say except thanks very oh, much. Oh, it's a pleasure, Bet. Now, it needs a plug. 
But I brought you a plug. So perhaps Mr Fairclough will put it on for you. Oh, I tie a broom to me backside and I'll sweep the floor at the same time. Hey, Maeve, while well, you're here, don't rush off. I want to see what you think of some of these frocks Annie Walker's dumped on me. Will you give me a hand with my zip? Oh. Oh, I said... What's up, girl? Well, do you think you are with Mr Fairclough being here? Hey, Fairclough, you've got to keep your eyes on your work, all right? You're going shy all of a sudden. It's not me, it's Mavis. Oh, never mind. Now, what do you think? Honest opinion. Well, it's very nice. <laughs> do you think so? I think it's deadly. Well, I can see it's not what you choose yourself, but, I mean, it's better than running round half-naked, isn't it? Well, I think so. What you mean is be grateful. Now I know exactly how a bundle for Oxfam feels. <laughs> Next time you're passing the chemist here, would you get me a bottle of Brewer's Yeast Tablets? Brewer's Yeast Tablets? Yes, they're very good stuff. They're full of vitamin B, you know. Oh, wouldn't a glass of beer in the Rovers be as good? Oh, no, 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 it's not the same thing at all. No, Brewer's Yeast, a few tablets every day, they're very good for the nerves. Well, you're not the nervous type, Arnold. No, agree. That's because I take Brewer's Yeast Tablets. Hello, Oh, and Tracy. Hello, darling. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. We brought your order round to get us out of the shop for five minutes and we wanted a chance hello. to say hello, didn't we, Tracy? And that's for me, is it? Well, thank you very much. And we have something for you, haven't we, Arnold? Oh, we have indeed. There you are, Tracy. Oh. A little present for you. How about that? What do you say? Thank you. That's oh. a good girl. <laughs> Well, well, I must it? say, you see. both look very well. I take it you had good weather. Oh, yes, we were very lucky. Oh, yeah. we had a wonderful time. Yeah. Do you know the other white at all? No, I can't say I've ever had the pleasure. Anyway, we can't stop. If I hang around, Alf will get a shop full. It's always the way. So <laughs> I'll see you later on, and thanks ever so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, she's, uh, she's forgotten the tea bags. Oh, bother. I knew I'd forgotten something. I didn't put them on the list. I tell you what. I'll buy you one of those memo boards for the kitchen wall. They're very handy. Then you'll be able to jot things down when you think of them. Like brewer's yeast tablets. Of course, I've made sure that Bet does at least have some decent clothes to wear. Mm, poor old Bet. She's had a pretty tough time recently, hasn't she? Yeah, you can say that again. First she's kicked out of her flat... Hey, and then just a minute. Nobody kicked her out of her flat. She could have stayed if she'd wanted to. It was just that dodgy boyfriend we objected to. Look, say what you like. She lost her home over it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, that's not the same as being chucked out, is it? You want to mock your language. Anyway, that Dan, what's his name? I mean, he was certainly bad news, wasn't he? Well, tried to warn her, but of course she wouldn't listen. Yeah, now she's lost everything she had. It's rough, isn't it? Look, if it's Bet you're talking about, I've been thinking, I mean, why don't we have a bit of a whip round to help, you know, put her back on her feet? Yeah, I'll go along with that. Yes, that seems a good idea, I must say. Have to have somebody to organise it, of course, you know, arrange the collection and so on. Hey, I don't mind volunteering for that, Mrs Walker. I don't mind going round with the old flat cap and a line of patter, you know. Be all right with me, you know. I wouldn't touch the charity collection, if that's what you're thinking. Look, why does nobody ever trust me? It's not a question of trust. Well, not entirely. It's just that people might be more generous with another collector. What you're saying is I'd have me fingers in the till. I'm very carefully not saying that. Well, you're a businessman, Eddie, or so you keep telling me. You see, it's all a question of image. Look, I'm dead straight, especially where my friends are concerned. You're all right, all right, but you haven't got the right image. I mean, it wants someone like, uh, well, Kenny. Ah, right. There you are. There for a start. Why me? Oh. Are you saying no? Oh, I suppose not. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ken. And I'm sure Ken would be very glad if you would help him. Oh, no, I'm not having people pointing the finger at me. If I wasn't good enough before, no. You know, you reformed sinners are all the same. Dead touchy. Here, yeah, cop hold of that. Uh, well, uh, we'll have to keep it quiet, though, won't we, till after the collection? Cos, I mean, we don't want to embarrass her. Oh, no, I mean, of course, <coughs> of course. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs Walker. Good heavens! Oh, God, blimey. That is a sensational dress, Bet. I never knew you had any dresses like that, honey. Bet, <coughs> you've got it on back to front. Hi. Hi. What a flaming day. What are you all dolled up for? I'm going out. Well, I didn't think you'd smarten yourself up to stay in. Where are you off? Going round to Karen's. I don't think you are, you know. What do you mean? Well, I don't think it'd be a good idea to see Karen. 
What are you talking about? You're trying to say I can't whoa, see her? Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. I'm not saying anything. Karen's dad is. I saw her this dinner time. She says he's put the block on you. How do you mean? She hasn't to see you again, he says. I very can't do that. Blimey, must be dead old-fashioned. Well, certainly he is, but according to Karen, she's got to take notice of him. Right, well, I'm going round there to sort oh, this out. Are you Ellis like? Now, you caused enough trouble there last night with Karen and her dad. Don't make it any worse. Look, use your common sense. Cool it a bit. Don't go round to Karen's house or see her, at least for a day or two. All right, tonight. But I'm not letting her old man break us up. And that's definite. <laughs> Morning. Frankie oh, Baldwin. Temporary resident of this parish. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, you're Mike Baldwin's dad, aren't you? Yeah, the same, the same. <laughs> and what I heard just now, I'd say you must be Kate Bush. <laughs> Most people don't recognise me with my curlers in. Oh, well. Something about the voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're back in the land of the living, then. Oh, it's not like a babe. <laughs> don't mind admitting it. <laughs> Come on, Hilda, love. We're opening in ten minutes. Folks, I want to see you dusting while well, they're supping, do they? I'll have finished, don't you, frat? No rest for the wicked, eh? Oh, no. Some folk think there's no to run in this business, so they have a bash themselves, then they find out different. Uh, whiskey, is it? Yeah, yeah, I was going to mention it. Uh, is that a large one? No, yeah, single, single. Mm. I'll see you right when the till's open. God, it's oh. freezing out there. Oh, here's what you see. She thinks all you do is come behind a van and start serving, come swanning in here and expecting it all to be set up for that. Fred, I do wish you wouldn't whisper. For one thing, it's bad manners. For another, I can hear every word you say. Oh, can you? How are you this lovely morning, my darling? Frozen to death. You don't know where I can find a sugar daddy to buy me a new fur coat, do you? This is that one. It's nearly see-through. Give us a couple of months. I might be able to help you out there, my darling. The trouble is, at the moment, all my capital's tied up in this new venture. Ah, is it top secret, or are we allowed to ask what it is? No, no, it's no secret. It's, uh, how shall I put it? What would people most like to see on their tellies? They selling dirty films? Yeah, <laughs> typical. No, no. Themselves. They'd like to see themselves, right? Especially their weddings, their christenings, their anniversary, 21st, you know. So, where do you come in on it? Then? So, me and my mate, I mean my colleague, we run this video recording business, see? So, say you're getting married, OK? We come along, we film you, then we sell you the cassette. What, you mean uh, a film of your own wedding, like? Absolutely. So every Saturday night, oh. you can watch yourself going up the altar steps again. Oh. Uh, if that's not 24 karat idea, I don't know what is. Uh, I've got 70 quid in it and all. Yeah. So what do you think of the idea, my darling? So will you be able to do slow motion replays to see whether you were really offside? Have you thought any more about what you'll be doing for Christmas? Do you know, I was just thinking about that. Were you? That's called telepathy, isn't it? Ooh, you must be able to read my mind. So long as you can't read mine, we're all right. Oh, good Close. morning, Mr. Tatlock. Have you got any of them sarsaparilla tablets? Uh, yes, we have. I'll have a quarter. Oh, right. I had my first Christmas card this morning. What? Oh, I was talking to Rita. Oh. Came this morning from Derek. Oh. You remember Derek? I do remember Derek. I mean, you don't have that many boyfriends, I'm likely to forget. <laughs> Put his address and telephone number inside, because even his mother have moved, you see. Hey, it sounds like a hint to me, that. Well, I wondered. Yeah. That's 14 people. Here. 14. So there's a chance 10, that you and Derek 12, will get together for Christmas, then? 14. You what? I'm talking to Mavis. Oh. You know, it must be a bit of a nuisance having customers come in and interfering with your private conversation. Well, all right, then. What are you doing for Christmas? Me? You. Well, if only thing in the past years are out to go by, I'll be watching other folks enjoy themselves. God rest ye, merry gentlemen. Hey, come on, you! What? Tanya was getting yourself ready. Oh, no rush. Now, listen, you're supposed to be at that doctor's surgery by dinner time, and I bet you've not even had your bath yet, have you? What on the bath for? Oh, Stanley, you want the doctor to find out why you're itching, don't you? So he'll have to examine your body. Now, whatever kind of infestations he finds, at least he'll find you no stranger to hot water and a looper. Ah, oh, flippin' egg. 
Now, I'll put some clean underwear on the bed. I'll just give it the once over with the iron first. I changed last week. It doesn't matter. I'm not having you ashamed to take your clothes off in front of anybody. What do I do? Stand up in the waiting room so me underpants won't crease? Have a feel at the system before you turn the tap on. Make sure there's enough hot. Oh. Oh, and here, something they were saying in the Rovers. What? Would you have liked to have a film of our wedding, like, so you could look at it on telly whenever you wanted? What's the point? Not a lot, no. Go on, get in that bath. So that's where your uh, bottleneck is. I mean, there's a pile of finished garments in that pressing room, but there's nobody on second press. Then put someone on. There must be someone you can put on pressing for a day or two, surely. Well, there is, but... Oh, I mean... you... oh man. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I'll be with you in a minute, Dad. Ivy, put someone on. But they can earn more of a bonus in the machine room, Mr. Baldwin, so they're not keen on moving. Fancy going on a press? Yeah, I'd love to. There's only one thing stopping me. What's that? Well, I can't help thinking out, but look. Your old dad out in the sweatshop. You were sitting behind a desk all day. Well... Yeah, I know. It wouldn't look so good, would it? Well, I'll tell you what. Tell them we're guaranteed the bonus. What? They'll get the same as the... As if they were on a machine, yeah. All right, Mr. Baldwin. Think that'll fix it. I so, hope so. How are you, then? Never better. They looked after you at the Weatherfield Hilton then, did they? Well, oh, I slept in plenty of worse places. All right. And now uh, you won't run into the station, right? No, no hurry. I thought I'd uh, stick around a little bit longer. Eh? Hey? Well, how long? What's up? Can't you wait to see the back of me? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's that, uh, well, uh, you said you wanted to go today. But tonight? I thought I'd give you a chance to change your mind about backing me. Ted, you're wasting your time. It's a great idea, Mike. Everybody I tell it to says it's a great idea. Now, look, you know what people have to pay for lousy albums of photographs for when they get married, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're going to pay through the nose for this. A video recording. They can play back on the television screens, show it to their kids. I like it. You do? I never said I didn't. I think it's a great idea. Well, great. Well, I'm your dad, so that's two reasons why you should back me. That's the reason I won't back you. What's that supposed to mean? Look, Dad, it's no offence, but you're not the right sort of bloke for this sort of job. I mean, a production like this, it needs a good address, money up front, a bit of style, a bit of class. Yeah, yeah, so? And then there's a the technical side. It's not home movies. You've got to know what you're doing. Well, that's Terry's side of it. He takes care of all that. Terry, and who's he? Some out-of-work-comes-cinema projectionist. He's a director, a BBC director. And what did he direct, eh? The interlude? When they had the potter's will? OK, I'll get the message. Look, Dad, look. If it was something I thought you could put your, your hand to, you know, something that I think you can really make a go of, then I'd help you all the way. I mean, not in a million years will you make a go of this. All right, son. <clears throat> you always were the clever one, you know, always knew everything. All right, we'll see. Now, Dad, just a minute. Hang about, look. Uh, hang around for half an hour, and then we go and have a meal, eh? Anywhere you want. No, thanks. I don't want you to spend your money on me. Oh, now, come no, on, And don't Dad. think I can't manage without you. Because I can. There's loads of people all queuing up, just waiting to put their money into this. Dad. Forget it. It's been plaguing me for the last couple of weeks, mostly at night, you know. Is there a rash? Sometimes, to come and go, like, you know. I was wondering if it was my, uh, my job. What job is that? Window cleaning. <laughs> well, no, 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 I thought it might be the chammy level, you know. I can't see that. Though it does sound like an allergy of some sort. Yeah. When you first noticed it, was it following anything in particular? One night when I came home from Rovers, and that's our local pub, you know. Do you go there every night? Mostly. Oh, that's convenient, see. And what do you drink? Beer. A lot? Oh, no, no. A couple of pints, maybe two and a half, you know. <laughs> I find it helps me to sleep better. Give us a large scotch. Say, please, you can have it in a glass? No jokes, please. All right, just tell me you won, though. One what? Well... Half an hour since Baldwin Senior goes out of here, then you come steaming in, in need of alcoholic resuscitation. Now, I'd say there's been a family row somewhere between those two events. Fred? What? You're serving? Oh, yeah. Get us a large scotch, will you? I'll get it. Just don't want me to work too hard, that's all. Oh, well, then. Hello. I thought I was early. Well, I wasn't getting much work done over there, so I thought... Oh, yeah, I believe your father's up here. That's why I wasn't getting much work done. 78, and I promise not to say another word about you-know-who. Which of Uh, half, please. Half. Certainly, Vernon. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I probably shouldn't say it, but I'll be glad when he's on that train and head him back to the smoke. Oh, yeah, getting on your nerves, is he? Yeah, say that again. Well, the truth of the matter is we haven't seen each other for a long time, and then he suddenly comes up here and, well... Oh, there you are. Yeah, I've just this minute come in. Yeah, well, I've just switched the oven on. So you've got 40 minutes. Less than the time it took me to walk around here. See what Albert wants, will you? Right, I'll, I'll have a rum. God, that's a shock. And don't blame me if he's in his burnt for a cinder. It won't be, but if it is, it's my fault, all right? All right, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know why it is. When people talk about the generation gap, they always think about the younger generation. To me, the real gap is at the other end of the age scale. Yeah, I second that. Frank, you're not with you, then? Nope. Only, uh, I wonder what you thought of his idea. It sounds a belter to me. They always are. Well, he's right, though, isn't he? You know, I mean, recording machines, I mean, everybody's going to want them, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. Can't go wrong. Do you know what he was selling this time last year? <coughs> what? Digital watches. Twelve months guarantee. And he would have supplies. He had the guarantee was that they'd stop before the year was up. Now, oh, this is different, isn't it? Not a lot. Your change, Daddy's boy. I say, uh, Mike, are you, uh... Are you having a little investment yourself, like? No, I am not. No. Don't tell me you have. Well, yeah, just uh, a little flutter, you know. Oh, blimey. How much? Well, uh, not a lot. Uh, 70 quid. Oh. Maybe I'm wrong, but perhaps you know him better than I do. Take this to the chemist and he'll give you some tablets. I want you to take two every four hours, all right? They should help you with the itching. Yeah. And I shall want to see you again next week to give you some tests. And bear in mind what I've said about your weight, won't you? Do you all the good in the world to lose a couple of stone? Oh, well, that's the wife of me. She's trying to build me up, you know. I'm overfaced every meal I sit down to. Well, you tell her from me. Oh, I will, Doc. I will. The only other thing. You say the itching first started after you'd been drinking beer. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Only it's just possible that that's what did it, that you've developed an allergy to beer. Hey. That's the thing about allergies. Doesn't matter if you've been drinking beer all your life, since you were a baby. Your body can still become allergic to it without warning. So, until I see you again, I don't want you to touch a drop. Not have a drink. Have a glass of orange juice, cup of coffee, anything, but no more pints, all right? Starting this minute, I don't want one drop of beer to pass your lips. <laughs> Bert. What, Ruff? Do you mind telling me something before I have to get back to work? What? What is it that's troubling you? No trouble. Look, me. I noticed it yesterday. I could have been sitting here on my own for all notice you're taking me. No, oh, love, it's just me, that's all. It's now, it's just something that happened at work. Well, what? Well, promise me you won't mind yourself if I tell you. Well, there's been a bit of talk, you see, uh, talk that we might just be laid off. Bert. Look, it is only talk, love. What, what does it mean? Is, is it one or two or is it all shop? I don't know, do I? It's one thing for sure. We can't carry on the way we have been doing, can we? Yeah, but maintenance, love. I mean, they'll always want you, won't they? I mean, they have to keep machines maintained. Only if they're running them. Oh, crack, I never thought hey, about it. come you. on, come on. Don't cross any bridges till we get to it, love. I mean, it is only talk, all right? I'll have to get back to work. Hey, kid, come on. You're not going to murder yourself, are you? Hey, I mean, it might never happen. It's happening to a lot these days, though, isn't it? Well, never mind. We'll have to look on the bright side, won't we? I mean, you're still gamefully employed, aren't you, my sweet? Tell you what, you can keep me in the manner to which I'm accustomed. Well, I wish I'd never said naught about that pram now. Well, what's that got to do with it? 135 quid, love. We're not going to be able to afford that if you were out of work, are we? You see, I knew I shouldn't have told you. If somebody sent me a Christmas card with a telephone number on, I'd think, aye, aye, somebody somewhere wants a message from me. You mean Derek? I mean Derek. Mm, that's what I thought. What's what you thought? Well, that he wanted me to telephone him. So I did when you were out at dinner. Hey, good for you. Hello. Oh, hello. Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, Mr and Mrs Swain. Now, what can we do for you two? Uh, well... Yes, well, if I'm going to drive to Birmingham, I've just got to have something to chew on the way. Oh, perhaps you should advertise. Last toffee shop before it moved away. <laughs> what would you like? Yes, I, um... It's to pick up a consignment of birds for Christmas. Parrots, budgerigars, cockatoos. Now, why can't you be satisfied with a turkey like the rest of us? <laughs> yes, I think I'll have a packet of those gooey soft centres. So, 
Till he gets back tomorrow, I'm in charge of the menagerie. Yes, it's not that I'd mind driving back tonight, but the birds need their rest, you know. Well, Emma's had plenty of experience at feeding animals, haven't you? Oh, well, now, not, you've not uh... forgotten Jim's Cafe and all them lorry drivers. Oh, I should sit in the Oh, thank you. Thanks. It's uh, Flora's day off, too, so she's absolutely on her own. Oh. Still, she doesn't mind. She says she can cope with anything. Spent most of my life behind the shop counter, you know. Yes, well, if you sell any piranha fish, just be sure to count the number of fingers on your hands afterwards. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh yeah. 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 Bye -bye. So, what did he say? Oh, Derek? Yeah. Well, he was very pleased that I'd telephoned yeah. him, and that wouldn't it? He's changed his job oh, now. Oh, about you and him going together at Christmas? Oh, well, he's going to Rill. They've got family there. A funny place to have a family. So you're not going together for Christmas? No. Oh, there you are. I said me sitting down for five minutes to bring him back, didn't I? <laughs> well, you took your time, then. I had to get me a prescription made up. Oh. Which bookies did you take it to, Stan? Chemist. I bet if them tablets could talk, they could tell us what one or two o'clock at Doncaster. Like a cup of tea, Chuck, <laughs> just brewed? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you get someone for your dinner? Yeah, some chips. When's he going to operate, then? What? This doctor you meant to see. He says I've got an allergy. Well, I told you that. An allergy to what? That's the point. So it might be beer. Beer? Beer, Chuck. <laughs> hey, Hilda. <laughs> Listen to this. What? Well, go on, sell it. I'm going to get me tablets. <laughs> yeah, and? <laughs> And I've got to stop supping. <laughs> what do you have to do that for? He says I might be allergic to beer. <laughs> you mean that's where the itching's coming from? Shut up! <laughs> Tell him shut up, will you? There's some more in the kitchen, love, if you like. Oh, I've got plenty, thanks, Mum. Hey, have you thought any more about what you're going to call, uh, what's his name? Well, if it's a boy... Uh, would you like any more, girl? No, thanks. Damien. And if it's a girl, Angela. You know, I'm not so sure about Damien. Well, that's what we said. Well, I know, but... Well, I don't know Oh, anymore. no, love, I thought something's a bit, you know, a bit plainer. I mean, it's all right since if it's a little girl, but you don't want no fancy for a boy. No, no, Damien. That's not sort of name that you want for a little... Oh, I'm doing it again, aren't I? What? Opening my big mouth and trying to run your lives for you. No! Well, you're entitled to your opinion, my sweet. Well, I am going to make a New Year's resolution. You'll see if I don't. I'm going to stop being big mouth, Harvey, telling folk what to do. Anyway, it's a funny thing about names, you know, because it doesn't matter what you call a kid, two months later, you can't imagine it with any other name. <laughs> oh, you're right there, Dad. Uh, Ivy? Yes, love? Uh, we've been talking about prams again. Oh, yeah? And you know you're the Tobias one? Yes. Well, do you mind if it's the Caricot type? A little one, not a great big one. Oh, no, no, love, you have what kind you like. Are you sure? Oh, yes, I mean, well, you're the one that's going to be pushing it, aren't you? And me. Yeah, especially you, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we'd like best. And they're only half the price of them ones you were looking at. Oh, we shan't complain about that, shall we? Where is he now? What do you want, Frankie? Yeah. If he wants to go, say, train, yeah. Oh, hang about, I'll go get him. <laughs> what are you going to have? No, not in a moment, Squire. Oh, I feel like that, then. Made an early start tonight, did you? He made an early start at 10 o'clock this morning. They're working in a brewery. Oh. <laughs> hey, they, don't, they don't have tea breaks, they, you know. They have beer breaks. Oh. <laughs> well, you can't. I don't out with it, that's 70 quid, so why can't I have it back? It's been paid into the bank, into the company account. Well, all right, then I'll take a check. Well, Terry would have to sign it. This one must got into you. This is the greatest idea since sliced bread. I thought we'd agreed on that. Yeah, well, I've been up in second thoughts, haven't I? Listen, I thought I was doing you a favour. And now you're saying that your money's not safe with me, is that it? No, I'm not altogether saying that. No, yeah. I... Good. <clears throat> <laughs> Come on, that train leaves on in 15 minutes. Right. Oh, if there's one thing I'm absolutely sure about, mate, is that you won't let me miss it. <laughs> Good on, my darling. Bye, right, Frankie, love. This is... Uh... If that son of mine took after his dad, to be taking good care of a lovely girl like you. I don't know what's got into him, honest, I don't. I could tell you, but I won't. The only women he gets involved with are all old bags. <laughs> he told me himself that some old vulture got her claws into him the minute he moved up here. Now, I wonder who that could have been. Yeah. Well, don't look at me. He's the one telling the funny stories. Now, will you come on? Oh, right. Well, 
Be good, my darling. Have no choice, Frankie. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, you'll be yeah. keeping in touch then, eh? Yeah, as soon as anything happens. Yeah. Ta-da for now. Bye. Bye. Ta-da Ta -da there, Frank. Bye. Good luck, Bye. Frank. Hey, Len. Can... Len. Can I ask you a question you're not going to like? How do you know I'm not going to like it? Well, I asked you yesterday and you didn't like it then. I might be in a better mood now. Well, it's about Mavis, so don't moan. Why should I moan? I like Mavis. Well, as I was saying, she's as miserable as sin because she's on her own at Christmas. There's just going to be her and her budgie pulling a cracker. Ah. Mm. And what I want is for us to invite her round for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, all right. You heard what I said, did you? We have Mavis with us for Christmas. Oh, well, it's goodwill to all Mavis. <laughs> Evening, fellas. Hi, girl. I'll have a pint of bitter and whatever Stanley wants. Well, it's a pint, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what else you got? Maybe. You what? <laughs> what else you got besides beer? <laughs> and Mavis, Mavis, come, come here, love. Come here. You know it's getting near Christmas now, don't you? Yes. Yeah, well, we was wondering. Uh, Rita was wondering first, and I started wondering. And, well, we, we both wondered, like, whether you'd like to come and spend Christmas with us. Oh, yes. Well, I'd like that very much. Thank you. Yeah, you see, I've cracked it. See? Cracked it. Cracked it. Yeah. What, are you, what are you going to drink? Can you drink now? Um, pineapple juice. Fred! Hello. One pineapple, pineapple juice. juice, please, and another one of them that's in there. And then we're going home. That's right, and I'll have a pint and all. One for yourself. Oh, cheers. And whatever the lads are having, eh? Oh, cheers, Len. Only I think uh, Stanley will have to turn down your car and offer. Yeah. <laughs> what, you mean to say, Oggy's turning down a pint? Shall I tell him, or will you? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I think he wants me to tell you. You see, Oggy's been to the doctor, and the doctor said he's got an allergy. And what's he got an allergy to? Beer. Got it in one. <laughs> you mean, Oggy's allergic to beer. Sorry, Stan. Ah. You mean, you can't drink anymore? I thought that orange juice was a joke or something. <laughs> Oggy, allergic to beer. Hey, it's not catching, is it? Otherwise, you can stay away from me, you. Well, I should be so lucky. Still, you're very fortunate, really, aren't you? <laughs> well, I mean, you can be allergic to anything, so it could have been something really important. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes and I would have locked up. Ah, my lucky day, then. At least I hope it is. Uh... Am I right in saying that Mr. Arnold Henry Swain lives here? Uh, he works here, but I'm afraid he isn't in at the moment. Good enough. Been chasing him around the country for three months, has this? Oh. Oh, sorry, I should have said uh, industrial and general insurance. Can I just leave this here and uh, I'll come and pick it up sometime tomorrow? Uh, yes, what shall I say? Um... Well, he's just got to sign it, you see. Uh, you see, Mr. Swain took out this policy on the life of Mrs. Swain umpteen years ago now, and she wants to surrender it. But uh, we can't pay her out without his authority, as he's the legal owner of the policy. So if he could just sign it where I've marked it, and then you or somebody else witness it, I'll pick it up tomorrow, send it off to Worthing, and we can pay her out. Worthing? Yeah, that's where Mrs Swain lives. I thought there must be some mistake. Mr Swain's mother died many years ago. Ah, oh, yes, this isn't his mother, love. This is his wife. You see, Mrs Margaret Patricia Swain... 24 The Meadows, Worthing, Sussex. You see, this is what we call a husband and wife policy. I don't know the ins and outs of this one, but uh, well, it looks as though Mrs. Swain's been paying the premiums. <laughs> And don't forget, classic Coronation Street is back at the usual time tomorrow. Stay with us now on Plus. Emmerdale is after the break. You are. Showing us how fit you are. And me like the side of an house. <coughs> don't worry. And just about as mobile. No, don't you worry, because I'll get you fit after you've had it. You'll be running around like a spring lamb inside three weeks. I sometimes think I'll never be me slim, sylph-like self again. Oh, of course you will. I mean, look at me. 
I were a mother once, you know. Now I have a figure, a Paris model, with Ember. <laughs> Come on, Daly Thompson, get your breakfast. Ooh. Are you sure you're going to eat all that? Just watch me. Because if you can't, lady, I will. Mm. You can have me egg if you like. No, don't forget, you're eating for two now, Mummy. <laughs> What sort tonight did you have? Oh, so, so, no. No pain? No, not a twinge. Well, it looks like he's not going to be a 1980 baby after all, Fred. Well, I don't think he's going to be born till next New Year's Eve myself. No, if he's not here by next week, I'm swallowing a stick of dynamite. And that's a promise. Oh. I'm not telling you it's a surprise. Oh. I'll see you at dinner time. Ta-ra. What's a surprise? Or is it a secret? Yeah. Oh. Be like that, then. <coughs> Have you had your brekker? Yeah. Well, there's some ham in the fridge if you want to throw it out for your dinner. I will. And there's a shop-bought custard once eating up and all. Right. Better out than in, you know. What is the secret? I bought her a ring, an engagement ring. Have you now? Do you want to see it? Yeah. Do you like it? Yes, Martin, it's... it's very nice. It, it's only a cheap one. It's as much as I could afford. I was surprised you had any money at all. Yeah, well, Mum and Dad gave me some money for Christmas instead of a prezi. Martin? Hmm? Uh, have you told Karen you're getting engaged? Not yet. That's the surprise. I, I'm telling her at dinner time. Well, have you thought? She, she might not want to, you know. It, it might come as a bit of a Of course she'll want to get engaged. That's what's been wrong, isn't it? We've been going out together, but we've not been getting anywhere. Of course she'll want to get engaged. Ta-ra, then. You can buy us a drink tonight. You can smuggle me in the road. Well, hopefully I'll be back about dinner time. What kind of a car is it? Oh... Four wheels, one at each corner. Well, if you want your folk a proper answer. No, it's a very nice car, Uncle Albert, and a snip at the price. How would you know? You don't know one end of a car from the other. No, but my friend who tested it does. He looked into its mouth, inspected its ears, and patted it on the head and said he was very pleased with it. So if you want to be the first to have a ride in it, be in at dinner time. Oh. This is very kind of you, Mrs. Walker. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, you both worked very hard over Christmas and New Year. Don't think I don't know it, or that I'm not grateful. And if the three of us can't just have a little friendly lull together. <laughs> I finished, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you was having your elevenses. <laughs> very nice, I'm sure. Nothing like a cup of tea after a hard morning's work. Get yourself a cup, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, thank you very much. Mind you, I wouldn't like you to think I was pushing in or anything. As if such a thought would ever occur to us. As if. Oh, it's all right, then. <laughs> <clears throat> Have you ever known a woman with such a perfect sense of timing? I mean, a free drink, mm -hmm. a chocolate, a piece of cake, and suddenly she appears out of thin air. Or out of the woodwork. <coughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, Mrs. Ogden, uh, would you care for a piece of cake? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> oh, Christmas cake, eh? Did you make it yourself, Mrs. Walker? Yes, indeed. It's a recipe I bought from Clitheroe. Oh. It's been in the Beaumont family for generations. Probably in William the Conqueror's before that. <laughs> I shouldn't be at all surprised. It looks very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Lovely. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Well, another few hours, another year will have started. Oh, God help us. Yeah, they keep coming, don't they? I'm going. That is so very true, Hilda. Mm. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let it go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Oh. Hey. I'll drink to that. Hey, I wonder what it'll bring, New Year. Cool. Same old dose of doom and gloom, I dare say. Ooh, you can say that again. Ooh. Oh, come on. It might not be like that at all. Talk about meeting trouble halfway. Next year might just be fabulous, eh, Mrs Walker? Quite possibly, dear. Well, I'm going to be optimistic. 
I don't care what anybody else does. Next year is going to be the one when a mink coat falls out the sky, straight onto my back, plonk, and it's a perfect fit. <laughs> yeah, well, wouldn't take a mink coat to make it a fabulous year for me. If I could just squeeze a bit of romance out of Stan now and again. Ooh, this last year he's been about as much use as a wet dimp. <laughs> Well, one thing's for certain. The days of looking after number one are gone for quite a few years now. That's a fact. It'll be Fred first in future. Brian's come first for a long time. Oh, no, lovey. That's not the same. I mean, a husband is a stranger that you just happen to marry. A child's part of yourself. You never feel the same way about anybody else as you do about your own child. Even you? Even me. Sorry, Mum. Do you think it's going to be a boy? Well, we could always hang a needle on a bit of thread over it and see which way it turns. But, you know, I can't remember if it's left for a boy and right for a girl or Vicky Burger. Let's say if you're carrying it low, it's going to be a boy. Oh, I never heard that one. There's no point in doing that other old wives' tale either, is there? What's that? Oh, well, you swallow an earring. If it keeps it, it's a girl. If it sends it back, it's a boy. But, I mean, that's no good nowadays with everybody wearing earrings. You <laughs> <laughs> you. Well. I don't care what it is, as long as it's all right. Oh, of course, it'll be all right, you daft apus. There is just one thing I'm hoping, though. It takes after us, not that other lot, the tools is. It's bound to, isn't it? Of course it is. Hi, come in. Hiya. Hi, I've got some meat pies. Would you like one? And I've got your favourites, vanillas. Oh, no thanks. Mummy didn't work. Oh, well, all the more for me. What's all this about, then? Surprise or something? Cup of tea. No thanks. Coffee? Come on, Martin, I've got an errand to do. Well, I've been thinking about things, you know. Yeah. How we've been, like, falling out a lot lately, having rows, which we never used to do, did we? Well... Not as much, did we? Weren't me that went away at Christmas. Yeah, well, I come back, though, didn't you I? You still went, though. Anyway, I've been thinking. So you keep saying. Well, people fall out with each other, not because they don't like each other or, or have gone off each other, but because they've fallen in a rut. They've got dead bored. Come on, Martin. So what they need is, they need to have something to look forward to. Instead of just messing about, they need to do something positive. Well, doesn't that sound like a good idea to you, don't you think? If you say so. So? I've bought you this. What is it? Take it out. It's a ring. Brilliant. Well, go on, have a look at it. What sort of a ring is it, eh? It's an engagement ring. I want us to get engaged. Engaged? Yeah, why not? People get engaged all the time, don't they? Does it fit? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Well, are we engaged or not? I don't know what to say. Hello. What's all this? Sir? Well, I've moved into the eighties at last. I'm now a motorist. And that's what this is, eh? A motor car. It's more than that. It's my pride and joy. Yeah, well, I suppose it isn't a little bit lovely, but uh, can't see it being much help pulling the birds. Ah, yes, but you see, I don't need much help in that direction. The way things are going for me at the moment, mate, I'm thinking of buying a Ferrari. It won't lock, you know. Well, what do you think of that? I don't think much of colour. It's bright and cheerful. It's only small, isn't it? It's a four-seater, five at a pinch. It's, it's a blooming full pack, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. A jury car? Yes. Well, I'm not going to go riding that, you know. I'd rather ride on a muck car. <laughs> Everything is religion. Aren't you a blooming rich?
ready yet? I'm ready. I've only got for my jacket on. But what time are we going down there? Well, seat yourself, love. I'm easy. Well, in that case, we'll get there at nine, then. Because if you get settled in front of that thing, you'll still be there when they come on in kilts. Hey, Bert, why do you reckon that they think we want to watch folk in Scotland on New Year's Eve? Because I'm sure I don't. Huh? Well, it's a big thing up there, isn't it? Hogmanay and all that. Well, it's a big thing down here and all, isn't it? Another year of his life's gone, another one looming up. <laughs> we shouldn't be celebrating when you come to think about it. We should be in tears. Well, you've changed your tune, haven't you? Well, we'll stop in and have a good yell if you like, our music. So you keep saying, look, we're going out. If only to show folk that things are still normal in this house. Bert. All right, I'll go. Could be something to do with Gail. Could have telephoned. Da, 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 hey, hey look who it is. Come on, and look what the wind's blowing. What are you doing here? <laughs> We're out on the town, aren't we? It is New Year's Eve, Ivy. <laughs> but she shouldn't be out, should she, New Year's Eve? No New oh, Year's I'm Eve. Oh, fine, Ivy. Honest, I am. I've not had a twinge all so day. Come on, get your glad rags on. Let's get down the rovers. Cheeky monkey. What do you think I've got on? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, not me. Oh, you know, I've been worried sick all flipping day about you, and just look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, doing a late shift at the cafe then, are we? Do you want to see the new year in, sunshine? Got your drink here. Oh, thanks very much. What are you having? Don't panic, it's only shandy. Oh, thank heaven for that. We don't want a repetition of you getting pie do we? No, Karen. No chance. Happy New Year when it comes, anyway. Happy New Year, love. Same to you. And it is, isn't it? It's a happy New Year already. For you, it seems to be, yes. You still can't believe it, can you, that she said yes? You thought she'd tell me to get lost, didn't you? Go on, be honest. Well? I will admit there was a little bit of doubt. Just a little bit, after the way you two have been carrying on. You obviously don't understand your own sex. I do. Oh. All she wanted was a firm commitment from me. Something to prove I wasn't just messing about. That's all. A firm commitment. That's right. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Karen. Hi. Come in. We're just having a drink. You can have a fruit juice or a shandy. Me boring grand's banned alcohol. No. No, thanks. Oh, well, I'll just finish mine, eh, then we'll be off. God, you look great. Don't you look great? Yeah, sure, she looks great. Um, will you excuse me a minute, love? I've just left something upstairs. She might say congratulations. I'll tell her when she comes back. Right, I'm fit. Should we be off? You don't want to stay in, do you? Martin. You're not wearing your ring. I know I'm not. It's here. D doesn't it fit or something? I'm giving it you back. You what? I should never have taken it in the first place, but anyway, here. Please, Martin. Silly us getting engaged. Realised as soon as I got in the street at dinner time. Been thinking about it all afternoon. And it's still silly. I don't want to get engaged, Martin. I want to have a good time. Martin? Yeah. There's, there's no point if you don't want to. So, I'm going out with my mates tonight. I think it'd be best, don't you? Yeah. Karen. What? Uh, have we finished? I think so. Yeah. Where's Karen gone? She's gone out with her mates. I'm not kidding you. He categorically refuses to set foot in the thing. It's beyond belief, isn't it? All those years and he still bears a grudge. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind if it was the last war he was thinking about, but 60 years of hating, I mean, it's a bit sick, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, I could hate him for 60 years, easy. Hey, you. It's supposed to be New Year's Eve, goodwill to all men and that. I'm a woman, love. Oh, yeah, we've got different rules. Well, I tell you what, I'll come back and take you to a club, eh? Believe that when I see it. Oh, mind you, as a woman <laughs> comes in the shop and she's just about anything Japanese, she walks up to you with a barge pole. Mind you, she lost her son in Burma. Yeah, well, it's understandable, isn't it? But it's still very negative, hey? Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, 
get yourselves a drink in. No, Betty's just getting him in for me, so I'll just shove it on the order. Ah, oh, thank you. Why are you going to give me a kiss for New Year, then? Hey, hang on, there'll be plenty of that later. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in jail. Hey, what are you doing here, young lady? Enjoying myself, I hope. Well, I only hope I look half as well as you do, look. Are you feeling all right, again? <laughs> yeah, it's just this seat. It's dead uncomfortable. You look a bit pale to me, love, don't you, Brian? No, she looks lovely. Fat, but lovely. <laughs> I'll you, Brian. Oh, wouldn't you feel it if she did it? <laughs> Where's your family to that, Manilda? Oh, paying the price, isn't he? A too much booze, too much grub, and very little movement. Hey. He's lying there in bed now, looks like that hill in the park what the brass band used to play on. <laughs> I thought you'd talked him into getting romantic, you know, it'd been a bit too much for him. No. No, I had a good look at him tonight, and I thought, face it, Hilda Love. The bloom's gone off that fella. <laughs> I thought just the same about him last yeah. night. Watch it, Ginger. Oh, I still love you, Len. Thank you. Uncle <laughs> uh, Albert, can I get you a drink? Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> just because I walk right in your car doesn't mean I can't drink with you, you know. Hello. I'm not oh, that no, daft. No, no, no. I'll have a rum. <laughs> Was there ever anybody like him? I'm going to be like him when I get older. Well, it pays, doesn't it? He's drunk more rum than a pirate. And coughed up for very little. Yeah, that's true enough. Bet, 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 get Uncle Albert a rum, will you? Yeah, all right, Carl. She seems to me to be in some discomfort. Well, she looked all right you when said she came in. Off. If you no, ask me, she should never have come out tonight in that condition. We'll not catch that train to Birmingham now. It's gone nine o'clock. Manchester, of course I will. Martin. What? Look, I know you're upset, but... It happens to people, and very likely it'll happen again. Yeah, well, at least next time I'll be prepared. I'll know what to expect, like. Oh, look, don't be bitter. At least she was honest with you, which is more than a lot of them would have been. They would have strung you along. Yeah, well, I wish she had strung me along. At least I'll be with her tonight. Now, you don't mean that, because in the end it would have been worse, a lot worse. Yeah, short, sharp shock. Supposed to be good for that, kids, isn't it? Oh, Martin, I don't know if your mother ever told you about girls. Ah, oh, shut up. I don't mean it that way. You know, falling in love's a lovely thing. It's nice and it's exciting, but it's not all happiness. You can be just as miserable when you're with somebody, especially if they don't feel the same way about you. I know, because it's happened to me, and it happens to everybody if they're lucky. Lucky? Yes, lucky, because it's worth the risk. Falling in love is honestly worth the risk, Martin. I think you're just saying that. I've heard you say different. I've heard you say that fellas aren't worth the light because so many of them have messed you about. Well, I feel the same way about girls. Will you be coming back after the holidays? I don't know. Because I'm thinking that you're thinking you're not. And if that's the case, just you think what you'll be throwing away. A job. I just don't like it here anymore, Gran. It stinks. It's OK, love. Just hang on, eh, love? <laughs> you know if you have it in here and it's a girl, you'll have to call it after Mrs Walker. <laughs> I wish the dairy up. Look, love, she was none of the false alarm. Of course it's not. You can see, Brian. I don't think so. Things are coming too regular. I'm sorry, Brian. Oh, come on, she's nothing to be I... sorry for, has she? No, of course you haven't, love. Couldn't happen on a worse night, could he? The ambulances would be that busy, what we car crashes and drunks. And well, listen, if it doesn't come soon, I'll have to take her in the car. I don't think she can be moved, Brian. Oh, I want to see if he's here. He's here. Oh, thank God for that. Right, which one is it? Well, it's not me, love. Hello there. How are you feeling? I felt better. I'll bet. Can you manage to walk, do you think? Uh, she will be in your chair. I'll walk. You're not carrying me through that pub. Uh, listen, you think she should? I'll walk. Let's give you a hand. You, you'll get round the other side. Yeah, OK. Oh, you again. You're the father? Yeah. First? Yeah. <laughs> it's always the worst. After this, it'll be like shelling peas. You take my word for it, I've got four. Now, don't be rushing, eh? Your living room is not going to be turned into a maternity ward after all, Mrs. Walker. Do you know, in my mind's eye, I was already boiling water and tearing up sheets. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, right best of luck, cock. I'll see you. You'll be all right, yeah. Yeah. I think someone ought to hold Brian up. You've flaked out, you. I know. Just in time for New Year, anyway. You're all right. Can I help? Sir, I'll love. Good luck. Oh, I hope she's all right. Oh, she will be. She comes from tough stock.
years old. I don't know what that's to do, myself. All right, Fairclough. It's just a New Year kiss. You're not rehearsing for horror film. Oh, great. Who's next? Oh, see? Do you know, normally you can't get a hug out of it. I know just Happy what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Only what it. Oh, Happy New Year, darling. Teddy Bear time. Look. Oh, no, she's not. Teddy Bear time. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's the same every year. At the stroke of midnight, British Reserve suddenly vanishes. God knows what would happen if this became a hot country. Did anybody see Mike, though? Well, he said he'd be back, didn't he? Hey, hey, hey. Come on, uh, Happy New Year, Larry. I think I'll retire for five minutes, dear. I'm too much of a temptation standing here. Yes. <laughs> oh. Happy New Year, Uncle Albert. Some Happy New Year. Flipping German car outside the house. Yes, Uncle Albert. That is the last time I ever let the New Year in, ever. I'm only collared by a dirty door, aren't I? Don't think she's washed her face for a year. Never mind shifted her lipstick. <laughs> hey, come on, let's get organised, eh? Oh, you like it? Come on. I just like New Year, that's it. Off you go. Sure. tomorrow in Coronation Street, but it's not as peaceful as she'd hoped for. Next today, we're off to Emmerdale, where life should be peaceful, but it's not. Mm -hmm.